What up guys? It's me Bash. This is the very first Whiteout Survival player interviews. Give me some feedbacks in the comments. Let me know what you think. Cheers. Yo, yo, yo guys. It's just my lame saying. So this is the first Whiteout interview and we got the whale himself. We're talking 346 million power uh, 476 four, million power. 476, sorry, 476, <laughs> I'm getting that all twisted. That's crazy. You were number two yesterday, I saw. Someone has already bumped up to number two. That's normal in the state of power. Yesterday was training troops day. You might have enough troops, who knows. We don't really need to go too much into it, but I wasn't here just to sit here and talk about your power. This is more about, you know, there's that suggestions tab, and I really don't feel like it's... I feel like it's watched, but everyone keeps suggesting the same thing, and maybe if we all can get on the same, uh, same, same focus on some things, maybe we might see some changes. I'm not saying we want changes, but it's it's uh, it's probably well overdue for a couple states already. Well, just real quickly here, I'm like uh, we've already gone through these, and you can just answer freely or change it the way it's up. But you're from state 70. Uh, your clan's name? Guns and Roses, GNR. Did you uh, did you have an input on that? Are you a Guns and Roses fan or? Yeah, I, I am actually, but I didn't have an input on it. So there, my fearless leader Selena. Um, she's from Germany. She's got a, a big. Uh, she she just actually went to the concert in Germany. She's a big fan, and uh, I think a lot of us that are are there are big fans as well. But cool enough name, and and we enjoy it. So you guys got some Ger German folks in your clan, kind of like me, my uh, trusted R4, Shock, Mirazu. Some similarities between our clans here. Um, years you've been playing these mobile games, you're saying you're going over 15 years. What kind of games did you play? I had Snake on the first Nokia in 1997, <laughs> and I think I've been playing ever since. <laughs> oh man, yeah, freaking... I used to play that on the PC back in the day. I'm not sure how much uh, years difference there are between us, but uh, you played similar g games to Whiteout Survival. So did you? Which which games? You can say it openly. I don't care. I think I was probably the biggest character in uh, Fire Age. I had probably the longest, <laughs> biggest run there, and um, I think everybody played State of Survival. And you know, I I think I've probably touched at least all of the the, the, the major games in this genre i just kind of enjoy them so you you hopped in state 70 so state 70 this is a curveball one state 70 did you you just downloaded the game and you just went right to it and trade tra kind of treated it like state of survival is that your I, game pl play I, I i just jumped right in i didn't know anything about the game um i think i had been in the game and joined another alliance for about 13 hours before I started topping the leaderboards. I guess I got in there on the first day it was open. And uh, I got invited over to uh, to Guns N' Roses, which happened to quickly be growing into the first Power Alliance at the time. So I joined on the first day. I just wasn't a founding member. Right on, right on. Are you R3, R4, R5? R4. R4. I like to, I like to sit back in the general seat and let everybody else do the politics. Yeah, when I, when I joined state one i wanted to be an r3 or r2 so bash sister she came with me from uh we played the walking dead survivor and i said to her you know, yeah. if i'm gonna play this game i just want to be an r3 r2 i always end up r5 and there's there's a lot of drama in that r5 r4 stage yeah. i'm sure state yeah. 70 you guys are calm now but when things start happening r4s and r5s they just get hammered with questions and when things go bad it just it's just a drama fest man. Uh, it's worth it's worse being the big guy because then you get blamed for every little problem from every <laughs> level of player all the way up and down to killing the server to to not being fair to this to that. So, you know, there's a lot of emotion, a lot of drama, a lot of different ages in the game, a lot of different cultures, you know, which is what makes it interesting, makes people want to play it, right? So, I mean, you know, we're, we're a big amalgamation in our group. We have a large, you know, or I think we have a lesser, but we started with a large group of Turkish players we've got chinese players we have korean players we've got thai players we've got um pretty much good uh, swath of europe represented we've got uh, a couple of mexican guys that play with us so we've got a real diverse group 
And, um, you know, it, like you said, even any of that leadership just increases the headache on making sure that you're fairly treating people with rewards, you know, what times you perform certain events, who's got to set an alarm, who doesn't, and, you know, trying to vote and, and be fair and make sure that, you know, your entire team is benefiting from, you know, the features of the game. So it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's a management job for sure. Yeah. So actually just touch on something real quick there. You're talking about organizing events in, in the game. So currently, you know, they, they switched up a couple things just recently with the bear trap, you can schedule it a bit better, but how are you guys before all this, how did you guys organize? Were you guys just discord based or just set a specific time UTC? What's interesting to me is it seems that, um, the Asian groups are focusing on a different chat platform than, than I think there's we talk and there's a different one that we can't access in America. And I think in Europe, they have more access to more of them, um, but not everybody is allowed to join Discord. So even some of our larger players that are our whores can't get into Discord. And I think that's because of their localities restrictions on downloading the app. So what makes it interesting is to try to communicate with everybody and then try to share that game knowledge, link things together, look at different Discord servers, and find ways to propagate that information through to the game. Um, I think I think that is one of the biggest challenges. And I got to say that Selena, uh, our leader, did the best job at figuring out all the time zones and charting them and trying to figure out the one that was either the least painful or the most painful for everyone. I can't figure it out, but it seems to be pretty equal. <laughs> So, so, so she set the uh, the time zones up, and I think that everybody can access them. And we alternate things so that, you know, we, we try to make sure that, you know, we all have to hit the alarm every now and again, but it's as fair as possible. And so that's a big task. All right. So I'm going to hop back to the time zone here, but this kind of relates, and it's up to you. You don't have to answer. But your, your favorite event so far in the game is the Foundry. Mm-hmm. So obviously Absolutely. you love to battle and it's it's kind of nice a, a little bit in this game you would maybe feel the same with pvp is it's kind of it's a random number generator what happens like for you maybe in state 70 uh you were the strongest so it didn't really matter too much but when you get to those closer battles and maybe you can kind of see it with some some uh i hate saying the word weaker players but they always ask, how come I lost this rally? Or how come I lost this, this against, you know, this, this eight? I would say it's what? actually, it's actually backwards with us. I think at least until now, when people started growing up so far, the history of our server, my power has been a downfall, meaning that, um, I was so big relative to the other players that we were drawing huge opponents that there was no way that one player's power advantage could possibly be. So we started off getting our asses kicked on the regular because we were drawing much older servers, which much more mature players, you know, higher level heroes. And, you know, it, at some points it was getting frustrating, but I think it taught us a lot. I think, you know, you could see our development in Foundry. I don't think we won the first three Foundry battles. And then after we got through, uh, you know, and figured the different strategies out and got in there and figured out ways where we could leverage our strength and where other folks could use their collective power better than individual power. And we figured strategies out on our own and helped us to learn. So I think we got knocked in the head a bunch um, because of my power up front. And now that people are starting to grow a little bit and things are starting to plateau out, I think we're drawing more equal enemies than we had or, or opponents, whatever you want to call okay. it. Um, and, and then, but the, at first we were getting killed. So here, here's my question. And you don't have to share, man, because some people like to keep it a secret. But what is what is GNR's favorite time to perform Foundry? Um, we always vote in the last two slots, um, and it has changed a couple of times. It's either what what are the choices? I think twelve and fourteen hundred are the later two slots you can vote for. Yeah, 12 and, we, we, 12 and fourteen UTC. Yeah, yeah, we've we've never had one that was outside those two, and I think most of them are fourteen hundred. It's interesting because typically that's pretty early in the morning for for us North Americans, so. I, I, I kind of chuckle because uh, 14 UTC, I'm typically at uh, work. and uh, Right, right. Oh, oh sorry, boys. <laughs> My boy, like I said, I just I just got home from like a couple weeks. Like I, even last weekend I was camping. So my dogs, 
I got to spend time with them too, just like my family. But yeah, to go back to it, so 14 UTC, uh, the last couple foundries I haven't even participated in. It just, it's such rough timing. So uh, for you, I, I think your your clan mate just got to realize, uh, even McCody, he, he's, uh, he's two hours ahead of me. But uh, the earlier time zone, sometimes it's a bit more difficult. A lot of these guys are, especially in Europe, they're lining up for, for later at night or two o'clock in the right. afternoon, especially on Saturday, Sundays. That's just perfect timing for them. Yeah, honestly, with me, it's um, I mean, I personal, but I own my business, and so I can kind of control my schedule a little better. But the earlier, the better for me. If I could go earlier and sacrifice where people could be off of work and school elsewhere on my team, I'd rather do that. I mean, because that's my piece that I get in the day. Nobody's bothering me at four or six, you know, in the morning. By the time eight o'clock rolls around and becomes mayhem as with you know real life so for me early is good so i enjoy it it's fine and if i can help our team out then even, even better right on well um so you're saying basically your least favorite is what everyone's hyped for and you know what I mean you share this the state versus state event uh, and anything yeah. gathering related with gathering related, anyone that has purchased packs in this game, it's kind of like your backpack is so full. You know, there's not very many packs that you don't get resources from, right? Right. So the gathering events, kind of null. There's nothing there for, for larger players. But the state for state, uh, I've already kind of told people what I think about it. You can go ahead and you tell people what you kind of think of the state for state. You know, your hype video got me so, so excited for it. I thought Foundry was such a, a unique concept. I thought it was just such a vibrant, you know, kind of a, a battlefield and such a, a an idea generator for strategies and such a cool place to, end of, you know, to, to show individual and team talent, you know, that, that I thought State versus State was going to be off the hook. I thought, you know, that the, the guys were, you know, in the game, which I've been relatively happy with, we're going to just come and knock it out of the park. And then, you know, I see this six day grind for every resource you can possibly put out that, you know, you're, it's obviously going to be a war of attrition with these type of resources because as many as you use in state versus state, you're not going to be able to gain as many that next month until you get there. So, you know, we're, we're looking at this and, you know, obviously the favor that goes towards the, pay to win players you've got that argument the free to play guys really don't have too much of an opportunity to make a dent here even in the participation phase and so it just it sets things you know apart pretty much pretty far and then now you've got another eight hour sunfire battle that, that sits behind that and I, you know the reward is that potentially if you win both you could dominate the leadership of both servers for for a two-week period i I thought it was a lazy introduction to an SVS. I thought they could have been a lot more creative. I, I think that people are going to get tired of slow gameplay that they're having to save up for a month or how many weeks takes them. And I think, you know, that everybody's already getting exhausted at having to fight an eight hour battle on a, on a weekend day. It just takes too much for the player. So, you know, it, it, it could have been a more protracted, creative, you know, more servers, type of a battle i mean i've got my thoughts on what i think it should look like but you know what what i think we got was probably a rush to an event that should have probably been a little bit more ready during launch time and and i think uh i think they really need to spend some time changing it yeah so that's that's what you're you're looking for so a new event you'd be looking for is a more in-depth state for state uh the one thing i've been trying to tell people for the state for state we got is more of a it's a soft opening, right? We got to know that we can kind of, we already know we got the foundry map, right? So we all can relocate to a new map and we all can play on the same map with another server. So now the developers, I can kind of see, like I was real mad about it, man. I, yeah, I made that hype video. I was stoked. I was ready to go down and then it was Sunfire 2.0. I've made yeah. my concerns known to Molly and to the developers. I was kind of pissed off. I was actually a lot pissed off and honestly our thoughts are almost the same uh the, a new state for state with multiple servers involved with it we've all played these games where it's i, I still hey, think a common map i'm not sure like 
you know, it's almost felt like State 70, you guys already have your banners, you have your facilities. There, a whole aspect of the game is missing because we're not building anymore. Right. And, and now all that's dead. I mean, the only thing that you can really do now is, like, you know, I guess you could strategically use one of your castles for, you know, cross-map attack on a different server to take some flags down or to take a headquarters or, you know, you can move things around and maybe try to get a, a better foothold on, on some of the buildings that you control for, you know, the various reward points. But effectively, building is dead. You know, I mean, we played the games where you, you start off in different areas of the map, you gain some zone control, you have some initial battles, you've got gates to go through, you know, and then it's an overall larger capture of the flag for the ultimate battle for the middle. Um, and, I, and I'm not saying that we have to do that here in this game because this game's a different game and it's a new game the developers have, may have different ideas. But just the construct of that is cool because you get a group of people that are on relatively equal playing field or platform that's able to, to compete for a larger goal. And it increases the strategy level. There's individual strategy, there's team strategy, and then there could even be you know uh, multi-server strategy and, and teaming to be able to either place higher or be stronger than you could be on your own or, or maybe go for the win. So, you know, it's, um, I think that we deserve a much more complex and dynamic and strategy oriented, you know, kind of competition or final goal. They've already kind of, they've already kind of determined that we'll never be able to have a game wide competition because they release features at different dates and the players aren't on parity. So that being said, you know, we, we really need something that we can compete in groups on and um and kind of enhance our gameplay yeah like a hundred percent like just to talk about we could talk about leaderboards we could talk about um how how they do the heroes you had mentioned it in the previous like our discord chat and how it's staged so currently we have access to gen 4 i don't know where it cuts off right now because i think it's a little bit different originally i think it was just state one to state three that got it so for state versus state, the first one, G state three versus state seven, they fought. And I know Nishralion, he was pretty mad that they were fighting for a Gen 3 hero for rewards. Meanwhile, Penny, she was off fighting for Gen 4 hero rewards. And, and how the hell wouldn't Nos be upset about that? I mean, here's a guy that has been a leader in this game since it started, has been in, intricately involved in developing all of his players out has been you know on top of figuring out all the power matrices and i mean from everything that you see and how involved he'd been in the game i mean he was one of the players to him and penny both that i kind of tried to model the, the style of how i approach the structure of power in the game you as well with you know kind of some of the videos that you laid out but those guys were just the way that they figured the characters out the way that they figured out how to get their true strength you know to matter in the game was important and would be i would be as, as as mad as you could be i'm surprised not even still plays a game after something like that that would be an insult to me as a player especially <laughs> as level it's kind of you know state seven currently watching uh when i was paying attention to it it looked like there wasn't much happening over there and we're, we're we're lined up right now with the arena for them um i haven't done anything with my gen 4 heroes yet I've kind of just been just taking it easy. And I see Ying, because they got Bang, Ying, Australian. St State 7 is going to be extremely strong, those guys there. Um, but they all kind of been taking their time for the Gen 4 heroes too. And I don't even, you just got Gen 3 heroes, correct? Yeah, man, I'm, I, I got to tell you, you know, that just highlights one of the issues with the arena that I'm just disgusted with is just the balance of numerical power with, you know the the statistical implications of the player and the friggin' hit rate. I mean, I was ex so excited to get Gen Three heroes, and I was so disappointed to watch Mia increase my arena score by five hundred thousand and be absolutely worthless on the floor. You know, <laughs> so I mean, there's just there's just some some places that we've got to kind of kind of figure out here, and you know, uh, that could be a topic for a different day is kind of understanding the implications of. Uh, of, of these um, hero stats, you know, I mean, there, I haven't seen a good clear definition yet where we can do some math on how to match things, these things up the right way. But I can tell you that this week, if anybody's going to win our arena, 
and, and, and when when beat me at it, they've got a good shot this week because I stubbed my nose a little bit. With Mia. <laughs> yeah, uh, all I gotta say, Mia is just like a random chance. Uh, honestly, I, I've been 19 million for a while, and this is the first time in a long time that it, I was losing to Penny, and Penny was two million below me, but she just did more. We could we could dive into this for a while, but uh, now I got 12 million power players, so I'm seven million power high, higher than them. They're beating me in the arena. I'm like, how is this even possible? I'm looking at it, and uh, yeah, I, we when we had all the Gen three heroes out, and I was just destroying people, and then all of a sudden somebody went back and recycled Zimmon and put Zimmon in the lineup and was destroying me with much less power. <laughs> so then we had to rejigger everything, so it was Gen two plus Zimmon. You know, yeah. and, and so you see these little weird quirks with the way that these stats are applied, you know, and it's, it's really interesting, but, you know, all good fun. I enjoy it. I enjoy the challenge of figuring out the characters, but I mean, you know, when I've got, when I've got Mia and I'm, I'm worth 20.8 in the arena. And then when, when I take her out, I'm, I'm 20.5 and I will absolutely get my butt kicked if I'm at 20.8 and I'll absolutely dominate 20.5, you know, so I mean, and it's, and I'll run it on a case of five, right? So if we're gonna if we're gonna increase the variability, how many times out of five am I gonna win with this character? And then with Mia, it's zero. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, it's uh, you just I, you know, it's just kind of interesting to figure all this stuff out. I I still have her in my lineup right now, and uh, I've been I've been re uh, you know the game plan whale wise is the all about the the gear, right? So I've been you know, trying to strengthen up, get level 100 gear for everyone. So Alonso, he's basically ready to be tossed on there. If I wanted to, I could do Gen 4 heroes right now, but I'm just saving for a day because you know what's going to happen when I drop Gen 4 heroes? You guys will have them, but I'm going to get Gen 5 heroes. And then I'm behind. Right, right, right. I'm behind. Right, 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 right. But, Again. you yeah. know, so I'm kind of just... Master, the master, master Forging is another one that's got my, my head knotted up. I mean... You know, I finished everything else. We're done with research. We're done with gear. We're done with with all that. So you're, I'm left with master forging, and you know the strategies there are kind of interesting. You know, do you do you broad base it? I mean, my first three attacks, if we're out there on the map, my first three are going to all smack you in the mouth. But we get in the arena, and maybe somebody's strong on three or four of them, and and they kill me. So you know, do you focus on that on that one march or that one piece of the arena, or do you do you balance them out? I mean, eventually. It's going to all even out, but it's going to be interesting to run into different players with different strategies for sure. Yeah, because in this game, really, it only matters about one one march currently for defense. So my game plan was to make sure I can defend quite a few of my teammates. And I've always played a like a offensive defense, I call it. Especially in this game, right. it actually matters a lot. The only time you lose true true troops is when you're on the offensive so right, right so that's where i've been kind of focusing on but if you made three heroes or three you might eventually you know what and it'll happen i'm not sure how f close you are it takes a lot of mythic gear so rng is gonna be required to max out these heroes because right i i have the formula for how much mythic gear it takes for a level 20 master forgery but I've learned a lot in these games is if I, I already know when I, when I get to level 20 master forgery on every piece of equipment, there's, they're going to release level 30. <laughs> it's, it's what they, it's what they do. Right. So, uh, uh, I'm just a it's, Cana it's Canadian just boy. Relative. It's uh, all just gotta be relative strength. Right. And, yeah. And it's, it's, it's interesting because you know, your strategy of having three strong master forge heroes. And if I had nine, you know, evenly matched Master Four Heroes, then that means that I'm I'm hitting I'm hitting three players at some some pretty big effect in the same time that I could hit one. And when you've got defense nerfed as high as it is, with and that, that's one of my pet peeves is defense is nerfed so high that even if I have a dominant force coming at you, I can only kill a certain amount of your troops at a time at a certain percentage. So when you look at these when you look at these nerfs that are out there, and you look at speed versus efficiency, and you look at how you can kill and destroy and take out combat and move, you know you got to factor all that in. It's just and I, I think it makes the game interesting. Yeah, it's uh, PvP was my favorite part of uh, most games, and unfortunately, uh, this game 
I'm not saying it's, it's lacking. The foundry, it's there, but it's it's uh, there's no penalty at the foundry, and I love seeing people attack. And when they make a mistake, they want to you know they want to throw their controller across the room. That's the type of player I am. I've thrown right. my controller lots in in <laughs> Xbox games, so it's really right. entertaining knowing that you made someone really irritated. And that's why basically we're called evil is trying to really you know piss someone off is one of my specialties but i've been very nice during this game because the pvp is just slightly lacking i believe believe there's supposed to be an update in july we're already you know two-thirds through july we're supposed to get more pvp stats i don't know if it's going to be any more upgrading to pvp but it wasn't just going to be a random you attacked and you have to try and do all the math to figure out what happened. There's going to be more right. breakdown because you don't know how many times the skills activate. And I believe that update is coming very shortly unless it's oh. delayed once again. Oh. But Yeah, no, I, uh, I, 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 judge, uh, I judge my success sometimes by how many hours somebody rants in World Chat before they finally give up. <laughs> oh, yeah, well... We, uh, our world chat is basically, it goes dead and then a troll shows up and then it just goes crazy for a couple, you know, we got our specific trolls as well that'd been there since day one, but, uh, our world chat, it, it, it's, it's something that's kind of been, that, that's another system here. Let's talk about additional features. Um, before you get into yours, uh, you mentioned earlier about the chat system, about how discord can't be. Uh, utilized in every country this game needs an uh, not just an alliance chat but they need a leadership chat so it could be between you know server to server or make it so you can have a couple chats uh, say state 70 and state 1 want to have a chat together you could literally say, hey what's up guys and then it keeps people drawn to their phone more the game I notice a lot of time the chat features to stay in the game if state 70 is talking in there and all of a sudden i'm in there talking we'll we'll tend to stay on the game a bit longer so i think the chat system needs kind of overhauled again in this game but you had some uh ideas and the one idea i everyone's been kind of talking about because a lot of people have already maxed out their vip levels so what do you th what yep. are you thinking for additional features you want more vip levels but you can talk about all the other things so how many vip levels or different items you want I think it's a good um, I idea. Think, I think VIP levels are probably right now. I think if you went to VIP 15, there would be a bunch of players that would just hit it automatically with their points. So, I mean, the level or how difficult you make it, I think is 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 definitely you know something you can discuss. But I think um, you know they introduced the concept of adding additional lethality um, in in the last VIP upgrade. I think we're probably due for somebody to add another march. Um, I think we're probably due for another dynamic of stat upgrade um, that maybe isn't lethality that also has some nice effect and that might be health or defense, probably defense, I would guess. Um, and I think, uh, you know, I don't know. I think those would probably be the two for the next VIP update. I'd look for. What, what do you think about now? Let's go back to the packs. What do you think about a pack? You think there'd be another hero added to the VIPs? The uh, the hero that was added to the VIPs was just kind of an interesting concept. So some of these concepts start out really cool and then they die hard. So if you look at this, we're still running Gina on on uh, events, and we we still have you know just a really crappy exchange system. You know they 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 got married to these initial things that were good ideas at the time and they don't modify over time so i mean if you want to change that if you want to modernize it or if you want to make the exchange system more efficient then that's great otherwise if they're just going to leave a dead hero in a pack it doesn't really excite me if it's a unique hero or one you can only get that way then maybe yeah that's cool but if it's if it's just going to be another 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 hero that dies somewhere that you can find a way to get a different way that's fine I never even cashed my VIP 12 packet because I had I had D'Artagnan Max before I ever got to VIP 12. So it was a useless pack for me. But I'm, maybe it's useful for other players. I don't know. Yeah, the exchange system. Have you used it? Do you use it? 
I, I did use it because, I, I mean, I've got a lot of useless shit in my um, inventory, <laughs> and I needed gold pieces. So, yeah, for, for shards, for sure. I I have yet to use it. Um, you don't like gold shards? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, for me, uh, the exchange system, I'm waiting. I always get bit in the ass, and they probably won't do this, but... Watch us exchange our, our supplies. I I even did the math, man. I did the math, especially I bought too many widgets for Geronimo yep. and for Molly. I had far too many widgets. And they said there's something coming where I can trade it in. Well, they're asking me to trade it in for like fifty percent the cost. I was like, Oh yeah, you? easy. I was like, what and then, you know what's a, you know, it's a little bit deceitful too, and I think that you know, the game developer should be held a little bit more to account for this. I mean like you know, for example, right now in the in the SVS that we're in, they're introducing you know new heroes, and they're putting a pack out there that gives you the ability to buy the first you know four ninety nine through ninety nine CAD pack, and then they've got five one hundred dollar or equivalent whatever money you're, you're using equivalent packs to buy these widgets, and then if you do the math on widgets you would buy far too many widgets than you can use. I mean, so so some of that, you know, is, is kind of unfair in principle. And I think that needs to be looked at as well, is that if you're going to make a pack available on a timeline for somebody to buy, you shouldn't sell something that's in excess of what they can use for a very specific feature of the game. I think that's disingenuous, at, at least. Well, it's no secret that you're one of the players probably most invested into this game at this time. Like you're probably I unless someone's really hiding a lot of things, but that that's a recommendation. You taught me something new about the mystery badges, and you're really high on them. Once all the good packs are gone, if you're looking for something secondary, jump to mystery badges. Have you looked? So Hall of Heroes, I just kind of looked at it, and this is where I'm kind of being a bit patient. Uh, if you're strong enough, like yourself, depending on your matchup, and I'm not saying that I was too strong, but our matchups haven't been very good. Plus, we got a couple more guys. Like, in a, I'm I'm probably the fifth or sixth strongest in state one now. So, I kind of took a step back, but now I'm looking. So you do Hall of Heroes, you can actually get. So our Gen three heroes are eighty. Uh, they're twenty percent off now. So, Gen two heroes are Intel missions. I'm not saying that uh, you know if you want to be competitive day one and you want to get there. In the arena, you want to win every time, or foundry battle, you want to win every time. You got to go out and get those heroes. It's no doubt about it. But someone who doesn't have as much cash to throw down in this game, I think it's very interesting. Your your mystery badge, uh, insightful there for people to learn because a lot of people make mistakes on just actually going to get the troop training pack, or it's hey, horrible. Yeah, yeah. Or buying the, you know, uh, essence stones. Because essence stones look like you can get, depending, I'm not sure what you've seen you on the mystery shop. You can trigger 240 essence stones every time you upgrade anything. So you can do that daily. I mean, there's some secrets on those essence stones, but I'm sorry, I didn't mean to get off track. Go ahead. No, no, it's, it's all right. That's where, like, you know, th this is where you're going to probably teach people things but sometimes you always got to keep things in your back pocket i'm <laughs> i i'm i'm very open about how i see things i've even like before it was just only english but i started doing subtitles for different languages now and uh the indonesians they seem to pay attention they want to learn things uh can i can i touch on something that you just said a minute ago about having to have heroes first versus have them cheaper is that okay if i touch on yep. that real quick give it yeah give her so so what i think is interesting and what brings a lot of character and color to this game is the different cultures that are here and i think different cultures also look at this differently i think there are some cultures that just enjoy playing the game and enjoy the grind of the game and it's not about the money or having it fastest and i think you've got some free-to-play players that are that are here as well and i just want to just put out there that my alliance doesn't need another one of me they need more people that are in the middle. Our middle is weak. We need people that are able to be smart with their investments, that are able to be good game players, and that are able to make the, the right decisions to rush the right things and have the right support pieces at the, at the same. I mean, I'm a strong player and I'm a strong guy. You probably don't want to mess with me one-on-one, -on -one, but I'm useless against a team of well-effective players. 
that know how to fill their rallies, that know how to accomplish their goals together. So there's a lot to be said for players that play efficiently, for players that look for value, for players that do the smart things on the purchases and make sure that they're a value and an asset to their team. I mean, there's 100 players on a team, you know, and and we need probably two or three rally leaders. So not everybody has to go buy every pack the second it comes out. I think you can be efficient. You can learn the tricks, and you can be a really good leader. Uh, totally agree. Uh, one of the big things, and that's why I made state one peaceful, uh, free to play. If there's no free to play players in your clan or in your server, even when I say free to play, they, you know, if you get, if you purchase the, the VIP monthly, I'm not saying that's free to play, but minimal to play. That's maybe that's the best minimal to play where you're, you're getting the packs that make sense. And you know, like maybe you're going to spend 60 bucks a month. Some people think 60 bucks a month is a lot, not to what some people have spent in this game. But even if you, even if you choose to spend 10 bucks a month, there's some packs that you can start creeping up. But, uh, the middle people, as you said, is it's definitely big. You know, some guys will every paycheck. I hope people aren't paycheck to paycheck playing these games, which there is a lot of people, but some people will toss down a hundred or 200 bucks. And if they continuously do that over a year, they'd be super helpful for uh, evil and guns and roses, SGH, even like these top clans, it'll be, you know, eventually over time, it balances out for someone who dropped a thousand bucks in a week versus someone that spent a hundred bucks every week. You know what I mean? Because totally. Yeah, so the as you said, the in betweeners they're needed 100%. Uh, there was someone who asked a question, and I know me and you already know this answer, and everyone is, I you've probably gotten lots of messages about this. Is it true that other countries have cheaper packs, guys? I'm just going to tell you this right now. It's it's all the same. Uh, you you can go ahead and if you want, you can get a VPN. You can change it over. I went. I've traveled with this game. And it exchanges my currencies. I've seen different currencies where I am. And the pricing all matches up. If anything, I think actually maybe sometimes on taxes it might matter. The Canadian US, I honestly think maybe the Canadian might be a bit cheaper when I was doing it. But I thought Euro might have been a little bit. But I know everyone's thinking the one region, Korean, uh, the that that currency checks out. It's being proofed already. Um, I've seen players try and cheat in this game. They get kicked out. I hate saying it, but some people just have more more cash to burn than others. And it's normal, man. It's normal in life. Some people want to spend 100000 on a video game. Some people want to buy a Ferrari, or I should say Corvette. But it's, <laughs> it's just, as much as you guys think it's crazy, someone's 600 million power... The guy has cash to burn, and he decided to put it on a Samsung or iPhone. Do you know what I mean? So. You know, it's interesting too. Is I think that um, I think that you have a different disparity in, in different places of the world about um, free money and a paycheck, right? I mean, it, it may may be better in some places, but worse worse than others. And I mean, we've got we've got people that are playing the game to escape from you know, what's going on around them in the conflict in Ukraine. And we have other players that are dealing with that from the other side. So, I mean, everywhere in the world, somebody's dealing with something differently. I mean, I think the game is doing the best that it can to ensure that the packs are on, on parity with actual costs. I mean, you know, when I was in Europe and things were flat with the dollar, I thought Europe was getting hammered a little bit. And then all of a sudden, you know, now the Euro's worth so much more than the dollar. And now it looks like that might be a better deal. And I'm sure with currency fluctuation, you're going to be able to find specific specific time, you know, examples where one thing might be better than the other. But I think on, on part of the game is doing a pretty good job of keeping that even. Yeah, most games I've played, you'll always see an update saying they've updated this store to match with current, you know, right. rates. It's Everyone always gets upset because someone all of a sudden jumps up 200 million power and maybe they've just been storing speed ups or they found a way like you know the trick you I was, kind of I was mentioned. I was slightly guilty earlier of having yeah. an outsized reaction to a huge jump for the yeah. player. <laughs> yeah, and you know you found the way you you kind of like 
Yeah, it took a while to figure out how it was possible, but uh, you know, I mean, somebody smarter than 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 me went first, right? And then, and, and uh, you know, congratulations to those guys over at SGI. I mean, they're strong. I mean, everybody always has comments. Well, now it's an empty server, and they're having no fun by themselves. But I'm, you know, I'm I'm sure it's fun to accomplish what they have, and and you know, good on them. They'll provide a, a good challenge for the rest of us to to chase after for a while. This this wasn't one of my questions, but. Uh... We only got a couple more here, but um, uh, talk about challenges. Who's a matchup you like to see? State 70. Because you got you got these, you know, it could be Foundry or it could be, you know, state for state. But say, say we had a four-person map, uh, you know, four servers together, and it's a map and we all have to build to. Who would be your challenges? Who would you want to challenge, I guess? You know, what's interesting is some of the older servers are guys that are rebuilt from previous ones and learned and have gotten better. So you're seeing a lot of the newer servers have some pretty incredible power. Um, specifically, I'm thinking of server 88's got some up-and-comers. Um, server 71 and 3 are pretty strong. I mean, if I had it my way, if I could go 4, I would pick, uh, I would pick us, I would pick you guys, I would pick 7. And I would probably pick 71. 71? Yeah, I think so. Is it pretty close, 70, 71, or is there a little bit of competition between you? Um, I think there's some nice players on 71. I think that, uh, I think that they've got some, some good guys there. And you know what's interesting, too, is it's – and we've learned this. I think we've all started to learn that the more experience that we're getting and somehow more than others on – you know, the interest server things that we do, such as Foundry or such as SVS is, you know, we're fighting, we're fighting a server right now, 61 on SVS that, you know, by on, on paper should, should kick our butt. And I don't think that's going to happen. And, you know, a lot of this has to do with, with unity and unity between, uh, you know, the, the, the players in a, in a clan or a, an alliance and then also on the server. And when you're, you're seeing some of this division that goes on there, I mean, I think server 70, like you alluded to earlier, we just kind of learned to play nice very recently. So now we're doing better. Yeah. And I think, you know, you're, you're going to see servers that have learned to play nice quicker than others. And, and there's just different dynamics and different cultures that are at play. So it makes this game really interesting. And I think that, uh, it, that on their best day, one server could kill you. And on your best day, you could destroy the same server. So that's a very interesting question. But I would like to play the servers with the players that, either I know or look up to or, or think you've done really well and uh, learn from them for sure. Well, I'll tell you this. Uh, State 1 typically gets a neutral every day or every two days saying their <laughs> their server is going to come and destroy all of us. And Yeah, I think I've got a guy on server 1 called Binkus Fetus, I think. <laughs> so there, there's a... There's quite a few people that come out, and, and they call me out most of the time. I get it. You know what? Most people, yeah. they like I already told the guys, that one of the first things that's going to happen is people are going to want to try and zero me, and hopefully they end up on the uh, the YouTube uh, for Whiteout. And I probably would make it a I, – I don't care. I'm, I, I don't get too – especially this game. Unless there's some big changes to the losses, what happens when you get attacked, I'm not too hurt about it, guys. You know? I didn't, yeah, I didn't go too deep into that. And you asked me a question earlier, but I mean, I didn't go too deep into it. But I mean, I think if, if you're a defender, like, you know, what do you really have to worry about? Even if my my big grumpy, you know, tail comes up and tries to beat you. So what if I zero your troops? You're going to get most of them all back. You got to put some in the hospital. I, I mean, the game is nerfed to keep everybody involved. There can be some hurt feelings and there can be some, some hurt things. But, you know, truthfully, you're not really going to lose a ton of your investment if you get attacked. And, you know what's what's interesting is i wish there were a little bit more of a dynamic to have some pvp that's in there the other part of this now is that i don't know if there's a limit on troops yet i haven't seen it but i mean i think you'll find it first in server 51 if there is one <laughs> but it's but it's getting it's getting to the point now where i mean how can you conceivably beat one of these guys that has that many troops i mean and i look at myself at almost 500 million you know if i went to bed at night and didn't put a shield on. I don't lose sleep because I could probably wake up in the morning and people will still be attacking me and not have done much yet. Yeah. You know, and, and, and that part of the game needs to kind of be looked at too. That, yeah. And honestly, 
in other games I played, there's been some uh, resource per, uh, production losses. So the more troops you have, the less, the more meat is being consumed. So it would be interesting. Or you know, <laughs> you got Mr. Sneaky YouTube, 500 million troops, and here I'm a newbie at 201 with 11 million. <laughs> but, but, yeah. Uh, here, here's here's a way, and you're like, oh, bash, maybe don't do that. But, you know, there is no punishment currently. You know, if you were to leave your coal, like if you had zero coal and your furnace shut off and you had no survivors, does it really affect you today? Uh, I mean, uh, there, just because of the very recent point gain, I would, I would imagine there's probably between two and three players on my entire server that I would have a problem soloing. So chances are no, to be honest with you, Bash. So that, so that's my. There, there is no punishment. So like, say your furnace shuts off, the coal goes, your survivors die. So if your troops, for some reason, had to consume the coal, and your furnace shut off, I don't know. There is no current punishment. So that's why everyone keeps training troops. I get why everyone's training troops. Is I typically always say troops are meant to die. It doesn't matter how many you have, and I don't care if I lose them. Oh, the, the dynamic is so high with power versus troops, and it's like that in other games too. I mean, but you know, at a certain point, you made a comment. We were talking about what's the definition of true power, I think, in the Unity server, and um, you know, and, and you said it was it was power minus without the troops. And I thought about that. And I thought about you know, it's one way to look at it. But I mean, if you think about it, all the status effects that come with every different piece of gear and every gem, and what that's worth battle wise and whatnot. There's just there's a lot more complexity to the game, but there's there's so much focus placed on power versus on on the troops here. And I mean, I don't know if you need to get penalized to lose your investment because your furnace runs out of gas, yeah. but you know, I, I think that you know, I don't know. I I think there needs to be a little bit more parity in the um, attack versus defense system, and I think I think that um, I, I think defense is a little bit too nerfed right now, to be honest with you. So and I think most. Most power players probably have that argument in every game. So that's what we're saying is you got the re reinforcements and then your rally capacity. So would not maybe suggestion your rally capacity could be the most amount of troops. So what happens is say your rally capacity is 1.1 million. That's your defense. And if they attack it and they beat it, so it's your 1.1 against my 1.1 and you beat it, it means you get my resources to me right, that makes exactly. sense rather I mean, than would, 1 million versus 500 million you know what i mean yeah I mean, if you try to come attack me with a rally right now even the biggest rally that's in the game is you know i don't want to give away too many secrets but i have multiple times more troops than a full rally in the game capacity could hold so what are you going to do my stats are already through the <laughs> roof i mean how could you possibly mount a viable attack against somebody that has that level of troops I mean, if you want players that are undefeatable in the game, then that's fine. But then pretty soon everybody's just going to buy a mountain full of troops and nobody can beat each other. And what fun is that going to be? Exactly. Yeah. So there's, yeah, there's definitely some discussion to be had about the defense in this game. I think that's what everyone is kind of, you know, I got called out. I had to zero a player in uh, state one. And when I zeroed him, he called me out, calling me weak because I didn't attack him solo but he had two million troops or sorry 1.5 million troops why would so i attack see, yeah why so would your i max buff capacity is going to be at 185 183 whatever it is and so you know like what kind of stat multiple would you have to have to take on two million troops with two hundred thousand troops i mean some of this doesn't make sense exactly no. so and that was early on in the game like i don't even think we were state 100 at that point so I already right. saw a flaw at that point, and it's, you know, a lot of these other games, I'm seeing solo hits from whales across the map. It doesn't matter where you are. These guys have got so many speed ups. If you don't have a shield on, they're hitting you. And yeah. this game... I mean, if I want to hit you, I'll hit you. Yeah, but, but this game, I'm not too concerned even if I were to hop on... So if I were to hop on freaking, if, you know, into a common map with someone... I'm not too concerned to be getting hit by 180,000 troops, even if if someone's much stronger than me. 
Uh, no. Because I don't think they're going to fill my hospital. You know, if they don't fill my hospital, I'll just heal. And I have no losses, and they're going to walk away with losses. So the defense, you're right. Like, that's probably one of the big, biggest I mean, the only downfalls. The only thing that I saw the other day in a, in a foundry is I had a guy that was, let's call him, let's say he was probably a, a 50 million power player without reinforcements, and he was reinforced to a million. And um, and I think the reinforcements probably stats were not higher than his, I would assume, based on what happened. So I hit him um, with a solo. And I, um, I, I quote unquote lost. So I lost four million, and he lost twenty seven million, and I took out two hundred thousand of those troops. So I mean, it is possible to overcome quite an amount, even though I, I quote unquote lost. I'll lose that every day if I'm getting two hundred thousand at, at a try, because the next time I'm getting three hundred, and 100%. then I'm going to finish you off. You know, so 100%. I mean, even if you're reinforced at a lower level, so there definitely is some level of where the stats kick in and i've seen some of this before where you've got people with a high level of troops and they get absolutely clobbered by a guy that's just running at them with 180,000 some high stats but it, you know it, it's very very hard to figure out where that is and that that kind of goes to what i think is one of the biggest flaws in the game too that whenever you're ready to get to that yeah so we did just kind of talk about this being basically this conversation one of my questions was, is this free to play friendly? And your answer is basically yes and no, right? You know, kind I, of. I, I think so. Yeah, I think that, that's a fair way to classify it. Uh, I asked you your favorite hero, and this didn't have to do with anything about attacking or anything like that. You chose Sergey, a tank. You just like his art. Is that what I, that's what I, it's about? I, I love the art, and I love the concept of a tank in the game. I'm sad he's the only one, but just. Just kind of having that in the dynamic to be able to foil all these creative, you know, offenses and just, you know, knock his way through. I just, I, I love that concept in the game. I love Sergey. He's my favorite. And, uh, the yeah, the last thing here, you want to go ahead and talk maybe about broken features, something that you're kind of a little irritated about. And it, it to me, it, it can catch someone by surprise, especially if you got a scout block on. Yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'm probably going to teach the entire game a trick that I don't want anybody to know, but I'm going to highlight it because I think it's the most broken thing in the game. I figured this out so, in Foundry early, so <laughs> go ahead. So, yeah. so for, for example, with my stats, let's say that I had five teammates, that uh, even six, uh, if I don't want to run a, a march myself. That, that have mediocre stats, maybe let's say a 30 to a 50 million player um, that maybe either has barely or, or doesn't yet have T10. Let's say they have T10 for argument's sake just to make the parity better. If I reinforce them and they get fully reinforced by other players up to their max reinforcement amount, which is, let's call it a million troops, they can then, as long as I don't move and the reinforcers don't move, they can then go fly around with my stats and now a million troops in their belly and go attack alliances. And guess what? Your alliance can't rally them back. You know why? Because there's nothing preventing them from teleporting as soon as you attack. Even if they have an attack moving on the ground, they can still teleport and suck their attack back up. So now you have one guy like myself or anybody else with reasonable stats that I can create six missiles of myself and go send it to your alliance and you can't rally them and you can't defend it, and you can't attack them because there's no way that your individual marches, because you can hit them with the rally, are going to do anything to them. And it's the most broken part of the entire game. So I'll call I'll call this the Binkus, but <laughs> that's what we'll call this tactic. But I'm not sure if you'd be proud of it, but but it's so in theory. I, 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 honestly, I would never do it because I think it's dishonorable. I think it's disgusting. <laughs> Okay, so we don't need to call the Binkus. We can, we can, we can. You, you, you can tell me someone's name after. I'll rename it. But yeah, I was uh, just about to say, but I don't want to embarrass anybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, here, here's in theory, and a lot of people can use this here in Foundry because the cat's out of the bag, and a lot of people have used it already. But for example, right at the start of Foundry, when everyone's in the loading phase, you can send your troops to certain people reinforce them when they jump onto a map and they jump somewhere so a player like binkus who's got his march one march two he's probably going to jump somewhere and 
you know, get get possibly. I, I don't know if you guys go for the teleporter right away, but you, you're going to secure your certain locations. And a lot of people in Foundry, the first thing they do is they attack people. But if you're hidden inside them, it's a rude awakening for that person not scouting and attacking immediately. Yep, you'll, you'll get dinged. <laughs> and then conversely, that person will have power much beyond what their skills are. So not only do you get the defensive buff, but they get all of my stats when they go to attack. And this is where I think this becomes patently unfair. I don't understand how any player who hasn't invested in the game, let's say that I can make I can make six mini binkuses out of free-to-play players and send that against your moderately paying alliance and destroy you, burn you to the ground. And even though I could do it myself, it, it's easier to send other people to do it. But I think that's it's just it's unfair. And then, you know, couple that with the fact that one, even if you have troops on the ground attacking somebody at that particular moment, you're not pinned to the ground. You can still teleport and avoid a, an attack or you can avoid a rally. And I think both of those things are broken. If I have troops on the ground and I'm and they're moving towards a target, I should assume that I'm in jeopardy of being attacked. That's only fair. There's no possible way I should be able to teleport when I have attacking troops en route to somebody else's location. How the F can anybody defend themselves? I, it, it, that doesn't either one of those two concepts doesn't make sense to me. I think it's bad gameplay. It is. If if my troops are out and I'm attacking someone and then you teleport right next to me, you're literally right next to me because you know I don't care if this guy instant his, instant his troops back. I'm going to get bashed before he's back. And I just teleport to the spot right next to it. It's cheesy. It's lame. It's, it's I agree with it. Bullshit. Yeah, Totally bullshit. And, and right. the same thing when I teleport away. So if I'm, if I'm hanging out GNR and I'm attacking players trying to gather resources and and if i teleport to somewhere new and i decide to go start attacking uh sgh if i'm attacking over there my 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 reinforcements should be sent back to their their proper furnace or they, their, they their should homes. have to march back they should yes. have to march you should be leaving troops all over the friggin map yeah no they get sucked right back up and you can just <laughs> go wherever you want to go yeah. i mean I think it's a broken it's a broken metric, and I think it's a it's a bad strategy tool, and I think it makes it makes bad players worse and greedy players horrible. And <laughs> you know, well, I think that small things like that, you know, coupled with the the things that we talked about with the you know kind of dull gameplay with the SVS, you know, we want to keep as many players in the game as we can. I mean, everybody's already talking about server mergers and you know. And, and migration and, and this stuff and we're seeing a lot of servers starting to go dry and have a bare minimum of players and you know that there's a natural aspect of that with play to win pay to win games but there's also you know like you said you know let's find ways to keep it interesting with the chat with the this with the that but what's what's considered to be unfair gameplay when you have money on the line and you're investing in the game those types of things will shed players quicker than any game can can probably manage so, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting because even uh, K on uh, Discord here, he's saying when you teleport uh, and you're in part of a rally, this is this is interesting because if you ever want out a rally, you just teleport and your troops will come with you. So that's kind of interesting that if you are part of a rally and you teleport away, you're no longer in that rally anymore. See, so, that's one I didn't even know. Um, so it's interesting. It's and I can't see the comments because I'm talking right now, but I'll yeah. hopefully be able to look at them later. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Sneaky, he called it uh, the taxi strat uh, instead of yeah. calling the the binkus. Um, buddy here, he says he trolls his state using this 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 tactic. Um, I will destroy anybody that I see that uses it. I will find a place. Whether sleeping, taking a dump, I don't care. <laughs> I will find a way to kill people to use this strategy, I promise. <laughs> well, God, hopefully, uh, you know, I said evil's evil for a reason, so you might be very angry one day with some players there. But hopefully they <laughs> let's go back to the server migration. That's the biggest question, and everyone's asking about it. Server 1, it's no, it's like, I don't hide anything. Server one, we're still doing quite well. We have a Discord, so we're very active and we talk in there. So people come in and say this state is dead. 
no, we're all still very much alive. There's a couple people that drop off and then you try and fill them. But fortunately, I feel more for the servers from probably like server five and below because a lot of people will come on to server one, two, and three and they join because they're like, well, nothing is happening with this game. So then they all of a sudden they start playing and we're actually getting new level, you know, tier nines and tier tens coming up because they've literally grinded out but their intel missions and everything, their rewards are better. So they're getting Gen 2. So if, really, I'm not saying you start starting a new state is putting you behind. But if, if there's no server migrations really planned yet, maybe starting at the newest state might not be the best option. Maybe starting, you know, state state 250. Maybe you start at two, 202 or, you know. Yeah, I, I noticed that when I moved to server 1. I mean, it was kind of funny. We didn't even have gen 3 out yet and i had uh greg and at server one like in there fighting my original um exploration missions for me you know within an hour and i'm like hell yeah let's, let's get going with this you know it was a lot of fun to see how everything worked i mean i can see where you guys have got hoes you should you've got like a tourist tax in um in state <laughs> one two and three i'm sure but but the rest of the servers i think you know and I, and I posed this in suggestions to developers. I said, you know, I think that there should be a healthy average number. You know, I posed that number in a server as 2,000 to 2,500 in my suggestion. And if we start to get below those numbers, we should look at merging servers that are in the same groups. Um, I don't like migration because I think it encourages douchebaggery. <laughs> um, but I think, I think merging... Um, is definitely interesting because then you can form different teams and whatnot. I don't think you should be able to abscond from the relationships that your character creates on this game. I don't think you should be able to just go fly away from being either a good person or an enemy or a hated person or a team player or a selfish individual or whoever you choose to play. I think that you should be married to your character. And I think that, um, that that only befits the player itself, but maybe that's a little bit, vindictive on my part well you know like every story a good villain's always always needed so unfortunately i've every... always i've played i've i played the villain a lot in the past <laughs> i'm not doing that right now i'm 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 actually the opposite of that we and we... there are probably a bunch of people that would disagree with you but uh overall in the big picture i'm playing the good guy in this one so yeah we we, we we sound very similar because at that point um I don't even know how it became, but uh, state one, I was, um, I just jumped, I lost my first Sunfire, right? So then when I lost that Sunfire, I said, not again. And <laughs> I went to, uh, I went to ridiculous power where uh, the second strongest, I soloed, I soloed him with a million troops. And he said, what did you do, Bash? And then I, <laughs> I marched towards, I built evil's banners towards someone's, uh, uh, Oh God, I was, I, we we destroyed a bunch of banners. We were taking their tundra, and I remember oh, no. ever everyone was up against evil, and I I stopped and I saw the chaos and I said, you know what, I've played enough of these games. I know it'll happen if I do this, and I backed down, gonna, and I said, it's gonna end badly. Yeah, yeah I said, I, I I'm not gonna talk. I'm not gonna talk any smack against a specific server, but. We're seeing that on our SBS right now. The entire server is united against the leading alliance, and they're messaging us like, "We're gonna attack them during SBS and really keep them up, so they know that that we're important too." And <laughs> we're just sitting here going, "What in the hell is wrong with this server?" You know, but you know, it could definitely, it could definitely happen. Yeah, you know, and that's a unity matters a lot, and that's one thing I will say with uh, WHW Evil. Uh, we did have LAF, but they just merged with another clan. Uh, Fen, Fen was wasn't even probably top five in power, and now they're top three. They were top five actually in all state power for a bit, but uh, it's you know I let we let other clans grow, and that's what as much as people see the alliance leaderboard for power, and it's probably the same with you guys in your state now, but. All of our I whales, let, all of... I let everybody grow, and then there's like two a holes, and I'm like, man, I could have at least taken them out. <laughs> no, no, I let them get too big, but who cares? Now you got to play the game, right? <laughs> uh, 
V saying 2K active is a big, big number. Uh, K saying they have less than 500 active. I would say that uh, 500 is less than, you, you know, I wouldn't say that they're very active in state one. Uh, there's no way we have 500 play. We definitely have 250 trolls. Maybe. So I would be curious to know what they start a server at. It was just like kind of hand information. My guess was 5,000. And the reason I say that is as I was watching the different events, as we went through our monument and we watched how many, that's where you could actually see players and how many people were active. I mean, I watched it go in, from in the 3,000s to the 2,000s into the 1,000, 1,300. The last one I thought I saw was about 14 or 1,500. And I think if you look at all of the alliances that you have in a server, even if it's minimal growth or hardly any growth, but there's at least logons. Then, um, then what you're winding up seeing is, you know, I would I would say we have 1,500 to 2,000 in our server. I would say of those that make an impact in gameplay, you probably are between 350 and 500 where we're at right now. It's... I, I believe they're at the, at the very start, man. This Discord is actually blown up for how many people are on here, but uh, there was a number said at earlier stages. Like I joined S9, so I'm in State Nine, and I'm still an evil in State Nine. I don't play it at all. I'm T10 there, and I kind of quit because originally, my I thought basically kind of like the sections. So the sections we're gonna have together. And I've played enough of these games to know that state for state common maps and having alliances does matter later on in the game. But uh, at that point, I had decided I had to keep state one as strong as possible. And when I was at state nine, it was chaotic. Like the difference between state one and state nine. Well, state nine, just because I wasn't a whale, there was no kind of real voice in state nine. The one guy that wanted to be the whale, he wanted to also have as many kills as possible. And it really hurt the server. But to go back to yeah. go back to the active players and how many is known. If we actually, if I do a search, I might be able to find that for you. If I do a search in the Unity Lounge, my, my guess is five. My guess is five grand, back, but yeah. it was more better. But I think that you've got two levels of what we call players in the server. I think you got guys that log on every now and again. They don't do much. They putz around. You know, they don't probably contribute to the overall. The grander world of the server they just play the game and i think you those are represented in you know server power and through you know 350 or how many you have in your in your server and i think that you know the the the, the 500 or a thousand you know participants in your top 10 servers you know are active and probably three to five hundred of those players in a server you know really dictate action or or, or cause change or cause gameplay to be affected i think and I've, I've been preparing i'm trying trying to tell evil to be prepared because when server migration happens and it will happen or the next state versus state i think a state for state a true state for state with active members um so it, say say we only have 350 active members you have to look at the activities of you can't just line us up versus state four which is dead and you put us with a bunch of dead states because then the state versus state is not going to be very fun. You need a bunch of active players. So grab a bunch. Like Even if you do 2,000 active members for the state versus state common map, and then what would occur possibly is after do a server migration where people can, can choose if they want to join state 1, state 4, state 70. You know what I mean? And, and it's almost kind of like a recruiting process. There's a lot of drama that happens with it. And... I played a game. I played a game before they ejected you out of the server after a certain amount of days of inactivity. I think it was 15 or 30, which is kind of interesting because then you could. You, that also had a, a number of players in the server marker, so you could actually figure it out. I mean, here there's a lot more mysterious about it. I think you know some of those things that you're proposing are interesting, but I mean, from a developer standpoint, I don't understand how you categorize and track "quote unquote" active player because. So... I, at best, I think you can, you know, maybe look at percentage of power increase over time. You can, you can probably look at some metrics, but I mean, that's going to be a real subjective kind of answer. 
I guess that's the thing. You could say who's active, who's not. Well, active doesn't mean just logging in. Logging in so you collect your mythic shards and go on your way. It's You're still falling behind. So I guess definition of active. There's definitely different. So evil, one of the requirements was if I message you and you didn't re respond back, I figured you don't even care about chatting and you, you're, I'm not saying a farmer, but I do need to be able to communicate with you so we can plan events in the future. We got, right. uh, we got O saying a little bit of data from his server. Uh, it's 68 days old, has 300, uh, 3,300 players over Furnace 15 and about 600 players over Furnace 24. So is that the drop off? Uh, 68 days, and you got 3,300 fi Furnace 15. Furnace 15 doesn't take long at all. You can be a free, so, so free, free if, to... If he's, if he's right on day 64, then there's got to be way more than 5,000 players to start a server. But Furnace 15, that's probably... Man, free yeah, to... You, free gotta to... Think, you, gotta think, you gotta think about the percentage of attrition of people who just don't like the game or just quit or whatever. I mean, if they still have like close to 4,000 members active over 15... And that server, and it's 64 days old, then maybe I got to change my estimate to what they open it with the 7,500. I don't know. I th I think 5K is proper because like 2,700 players might have quit the game or not gone past Furnace 15. That's very possible. You said like a lot of people download this game. And so my my buddy, good friend, he's actually in the chat listening, Bash Brother 2. He downloaded this game and he played similar games like it, but it just wasn't for him. He didn't understand it as well as uh, the other games. I wouldn't say understand it. It just never grabbed his interest like it grabbed mine. So he actually put a funny comment in the messages there. He said, I am a good guy in this game compared to what I was in the past games I played. So I kind of found that funny. <laughs> I love that. I yeah. love that. He, he and even you, like, I mean... You guys sounded like you were a bunch of hard asses at the beginning and you softened up or matured or whatever you call it as it, as it grew, huh? Well, we would have been playing, honestly, if we would have continued, it'd be me and McCody and Bash Sister 1 in a dead oh, yeah. dead state, dead clan. So, uh, oh, here we go. We got server 240 ranked 1,800. So, 18,000. So it's more than that. You're, you're correct. Uh, that's state 240, yeah. and they got 18,000 people in state 240. Man, maybe I don't understand the attrition ratios as well as I thought I did. So, they I mean, did... if it's 18,000, it's got to start with 20 then, right? You you weren't part of the very first foundry, but the very first foundry, there was crashes everywhere. The biggest joke yeah. was, at that point, I think Penny was on number one for power. I was uh, for heroes, and... I remember watching watching that video where you got her with a Zimman attack, I think it was. And, I, and if I was her, I would have been so mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? At the end of it, I think I broke it down a bit more. And their infantry um, was much lower. And... Yeah, infantry infantry is a broken stat in this game, too. Yeah. I haven't gotten in it. I didn't go into total depth because I thought it was going to be a short interview. But, yeah, I think infantry is totally fucking broken. Um, I mean, you can run... You can run 80-20, you can run 70-30, and your power just keeps increasing. I mean, the other two are pretty much ineffective, but we'll, we'll leave that alone for now. I'll, I'll ask this question to you. Uh, Kay on the chat is asking, do you think Foundries should be more often? Um, no. No. I don't think Foundries should be more often. I think it should either be bigger um or um or other things should be less often i think foundry's pace is pretty good actually um this is a question for me what do you think of alliance championship Ugh. is that it I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I didn't i didn't want to i didn't want to put too many negative things in my comment for the interview but that would be my answer to that that's all right. That's all you got to say. I can I can edit that later and I'll put a, a yay on there. It's all right. It's I said I, I want negative and positive feedback. I don't care, man. Don't hide. You're, you're one of the most, you know, invested and active players on this game. It's not about money, but you are <laughs> you are uh, always 
I, I notice you're active on Unity Lounge and the, you know, the leaderboard, I, I see your power keep going up. Uh, what about, this is my most, I'll, I'll share my feature I hate the most, the Alliance Mobilization. What do you think of this event? <laughs> same. You same. know, it, it's kind of like a gotcha event, really, right? So, and I think it's the most annoying event if you're a leader. Because you have to keep whining at people to pay attention to it, right? So I go through my motions in the game. I think when you, when you, I'm not going to say I'm a professional game player, but I'm a very dedicated game player. So when I go through the motions of a game, I almost approach it when I log on the same way and do the same things. And so when you have that curveball in there, it's like Alliance Motivation isn't really out of the track of what I normally do during my gameplay. Like I'm going to address all or most of those issues during the week anyway it's just what's available and then programming myself to make sure that i take advantage of clicking the button before i undertake a task that i'm normally going to go do right so i mean it's creative in the in the fact that you know it encourages people to down the path of doing certain things that could upgrade but i think it's another one of those things that we just spoke about earlier that it's a relic of an initial early phase item that they got married to that they haven't let die yet like it, the gina attack or something you know like great it was nice when you were teaching people gameplay it's good for that after that when people know what's going on it's just effing annoying and, <laughs> and, and i'll leave it there yeah we're we're talking about hey use your essence stones today well uh, you know may, may, but you maybe know. maybe we're seeing it differently you know on uh, someone who's free to play and know they're not going to make a huge impact for them to grab those essence stones, do they save up 20 essence stones? Because, you know, like 20 essence stones well, doesn't, doesn't and, mean and much. You're, you know what? From that aspect you know, from that aspect of it and that perspective, Bash, you're not wrong. Because what I do see is I do see players that otherwise don't contribute to pay items really step up and show their own or earn some rewards in that event. You know, and there's things that people are capable of doing that don't involve money. And from that aspect of it, on its face, I would agree it's a good event. But for me personally, it just kind of screws with my yeah. my process, I would yeah, say. Yeah, your know? game plan. Because the Alliance mobilization shows up a week before um, the new Gen 3 hero drops and you're trying to win them for, for the which, state which of power. Why, yeah, which is what ties into what makes SVS just really annoying. Is because as you're developing your character, I mean, it happens at different paces for different people, but... I mean, right now, I can't build a building, I can't research anything, and I can, and I, and I max out my ability to grab gold pieces and use stones once a week, you know, so when we have to break it down and doing this, and then the ability to not do that screws up my war planning, and it screws up my arena plan, and it screws up everything else, because, and maybe this is a very specific perspective, but I live in a spot where everybody expects me to have the highest stats time and be ready to fight at the drop of a hat and be able to be reinforced and defend whatever it is that we have going on so from my perspective i really don't have the luxury of time to wait to do these things and and it forces you to and that drives me literally crazy so so from from that perspective i may not agree with some of the specific things that that are there but from your point to the point that there's a nice event that to play players can get in and contribute yo guys so i lost big kiss for a quick second i'm bringing him back the static means we lost him but we're bringing him back it's coming in real quick here the transition will happen immediately apologies it was just a disconnection problem all that uh there is a sure. question here bear go for it bear trap uh, how, do, how do you inflict the most damage? What's your tactic? So bear trap is kind of funny because um, it can happen two different two different ways, right? So you can choose that you're going to boost for bear trap or you can choose that you're not going to boost for bear trap. So if you boost for bear trap, you're going to wind up spending $70,000 in the VIP shop if your level's high enough and 20,000 gems for your uh, lethality. So you're gonna wind up spending ninety thousand gems to boost for bear trap. Um, that is the highest way to do damage in in bear trap is to boost. And um, obviously you need to launch your attack 
first and make sure that you get your full five attacks in, and you need to make sure that you are a fiend at joining the highest level other players' attacks that you can uh, with your other six now marches that they let you have. So do you kick people from your rallies or anything? Do you do anything like that? No, I mean, it's such a fast-paced thing. In, in our group, we're trying to get as much against the bear as we can because in our team, we view alliance points way more valuably than we do individual points. Um, I mean, we would probably shape it differently if we we're trying to mold an individual record or something like that. But we try to get as much off against the bear as we can in 30 minutes. Um, so we encourage multiple attacks. I don't kick anybody out of my attack. It really doesn't affect it. Actually, to, to be honest with you, in my analysis, the stronger people that you have in your attack, the lesser points you get as the attacker. So the weaker players that I have in my attack, the stronger I would be. But I, I don't adjust my marches. Anybody that can get in, I let them in because it's kind of a big thing. Um, I increase people's points a lot, so they try to get on my attack. And conversely, I try to get on our stronger players' attacks just so that I can get the bigger points and the bigger rewards. So that that's the big joke, eh? Is like everyone in the uh, Lions chat, as soon as you put a rally, yeah, it's instant. Yeah, they try to get into a big <laughs> bear attack. Everyone... You know, I quit playing. Like I quit playing for a while because it got contentious in our in our group about being fair or unfair, and then it just got like too much to manage. So I said, you know what, guys, I'm just going to take a break and let you guys play a little bit. And then when I come back on now, it's more fun, and um, which is kind of where we where we need to leave it. The gaps in between award branches are so wide that unless you're really on the verge of an award branch, um, it doesn't fucking matter. So you know, kind of kind of have some fun with it. You know, if you're bigger, drag your people along, try to join your bigger team's rallies, and um, obviously you maximize your points by being the biggest and involved with the biggest all the time. And then you decide if you want to spend 90,000 gems to buff yourself up for the event, or if you want to just uh, kind of play it naked, it's your choice. Uh, what else was said here? Uh, one guy, well, oh, he's the one that tested the, the audio here when you're gone. 90 sure. 90k gems is it worth it for just a couple more essence stones um i don't think so um i do however during in between modifications to my characters i do like to see the progress and i like to see what the new modifications have made it capable of points wise so i don't do it every time but when i make some significant mods or investments or changes to my character um I always want to kind of take it for a spin, and I'll I'll definitely do it then. So, theoretically speaking, so anytime you use a boost, especially yourself, uh, mm -hmm. you should try and line up. So foundry, everyone's boosted. So you guys should be trying to do bear trap that that same yep. same time. Everyone gets their boost, get the most points. So try and use. I mean, those boosts exactly the best. The best that you can allocate all those things to work together. You know, obviously, the better for your whole team and the, the less resources you use to accomplish it. Everyone's depending on heroes. I'm just like you. How are the heroes from people that join Rally are getting picked for boost? Um, honestly, from the bear trap, it's kind of like that's another thing about breakdown in this game. It doesn't really tell us uh, what's happening in the bear trap battles. But I would. You know, I got to tell you, Bash, some people are smarter than me at certain things and they give me advice. Sometimes it embarrasses me, and they're worth 20 million points, and they're like, well, I don't understand why you didn't do that with this hero. And then I'll bite my tongue, I'll go back, and I'll look at that hero, and I'm like, you know what? They were 100% friggin' right. And just because I'm big enough that it doesn't matter, I think I got sloppy and I didn't pay attention. But some of the players are exactly right, especially if you're not a high level. If you take a look at what gives you the best advantage, I mean, obviously we know there's a character that's specific for every mining mission that we want to go on. Hunting missions are, you know, chorus for sure. And you look at these different things, then you look at some of the events that, that are there and what the advantages are to them. And if you really cherry pick your heroes, you're going to do a lot better. And some of those players that are a lot smarter than I am are far lesser in power, and they project far more power because of their knowledge of the game, and I think that's important to pay attention to. It's... Uh... Now let's talk about tricks. Crazy, crazy Joe. Do you race to the Tundra at level 10 and 20? No, so we actually penalize that in our alliance, right? So 
Um, what winds up happening is, again, the theory. The theory is alliance points are better than individual points, and the best way to get alliance points is to have your best rally leader in the, um, the headquarters during both attacks. So if somebody leaves before the level 9 attack um, ends and then starts to put somebody towards the headquarters, we'll eject them every time, right? So we try to get our, our biggest rally player in first, and then everybody can fill in as kind of a free-for-all. Um, there has been a suggestion to um, be a little bit more compassionate and let people that need more points in and assign them. I, you know, that just seems to be over-managing the task. So our only real rule that we usually follow is let your rally leader in first and then, you know, he who, he who may go, you know, and, and, and get it done. It's, it's kind of kind of humorous what's going on here because I just realized in this Discord chat here, some people have names, so I apologize when I'm calling O I O uh, K. For my screen, I can't see your full names because I just realized Bash Brother 2's here and his name is B. So <laughs> I, for some reason, it's kind of messed up. So some of you guys have most likely have talked to lots before, and I apologize for not getting your guys' names. It's like I can see Twisted Kitty, Jelly Rose, MZ, Scotch. Oh yikes, man! So. All it was is O, oh, so I had no idea. So now you said it, I can actually see it. It's some type of little glitch in the, the Discord matrix here. But uh, yeah, uh, one thing I've noticed with Crazy Joe is the the infantry seem to do, uh, they attack first and they kill the, like because you're such a high level that, you know, level 20 doesn't matter. You said it doesn't, like, it, for, it wouldn't make any sense for anyone to reinforce uh, Cause... So I'll tell, I'll, I will tell you a trick about Crazy Joe. I'll tell you two things real quick. Number one about Crazy Joe, um, no, it doesn't matter to me. The biggest mistake I make all the time is that I'm so busy doing other things that I reinforce people that aren't online and they lose points. So that's never reinforce somebody that's not online or you lose points. Um, but there's a there's a trick that was found by one of our players, which is, uh, which is well, I had never heard of before, and I think it's really cool. So maybe some of you might like it. So the trick is, if you have no players of your own in your stronghold, you cannot get burned. What does that mean? That means if you send all of your players out to reinforce other players and you have zero of your own players in your house, you'll run all the way through level 20 and you won't get burned. Other people can reinforce you and take those points as well. So everybody on our team tries to evacuate. And this it means that you have to have a low enough level of troops that you can get them all out in six marches. But if you can get all of your troops out and get them gone, you will not be burned in Crazy Joe. And there's your trick for the day. Interesting. I yet to, I did not notice that one, but uh, good luck getting all your troops out of your stronghold. Not that <laughs> I won't have it. <laughs> not, not it doesn't matter. Um, we got here someone sharing a report on it. Uh, level. So no troops inside, got all the points. Yeah, that's. Yep. I, I, you know, that's most of the time. That's what I've always sent all my troops out, and we always had someone defending us. I didn't realize that's exactly what was happening at that point. But you do get mm -hmm. a bunch of points uh, if everyone kind of defends you. It's because you won. Actually, if you look back at the uh, Discord note or the uh, notes that came out from the developer on this topic. Um, they very clearly say, because I was pissed off at first that people reinforcing me. I thought they were stealing my points. But it actually says that anybody reinforcing another um, player's um, furnace is actually, those are extra points that are created for that player. They do not affect the amount of points that the player gets for defending his own furnace. So as much as you want to go out, those are extra points that are for you. Your own furnace is your own points, and that does not get affected by whoever reinforces. I, I thought it was kind of the same way, but it was opposite where I'd reinforce someone and then someone else would join in afterwards. Or uh, you know, the last three points. No, so I, was, I mean I they like, said it was they said it was for reinforcers, so I got to take them at their word. So yeah, that's uh, you know, some good good ideas. I know that uh, I've typically seen. I don't go for the tundra either for level ten or level twenty. By the time you get there, 
uh, and then time you get back, it's such a quick turnover. No, I, and... I go because I'm usually the biggest guy. Um, and 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 honestly, if you're trying to win for your alliance, you can't win. Um, you can't win for the alliance if you don't get all the points. So, if you're the big guy, you got to do it. Um, we, yeah, basically, I, I, I've, I've normally have sent my alliance, and uh, I mean, I've sent my march. I get there. And then I've seen these uh, these Indonesians on, or even Thai players on Evil, and they're only sending infantry. And the <laughs> uh, the amount of because they get my stats against Joe, the amount right. of points they get it's ridiculous. Because now they're getting more points off me, so this kind of like irritated the me end, in a way. Uh, I'm, I'm telling you, the infantry trick is ridiculous, and and you know I don't, I don't want to nerf it too bad, but I mean. I could literally just send infantry everything I did and be extremely more powerful than I choose to be. And well, I think it's a huge problem in the game. It's a it's a over nerf on infantry. And that's where I kind of noticed other clans in server one. They're our family, yeah. but they're still competing against us for, for certain right, events. Right, right. And I've seen some of these guys like <sighs> weaker than me get over <laughs> <laughs> 300,000 more points than me. I'm like, what am I doing wrong? I literally had six people active. I got into the tundra. What's happening? And my biggest, like you already know, like I've only spent 699 on troops, Canadian. Well, so I've only... Well, my, the, the thing that makes me your biggest fan bash is that you try to figure out the dynamic very quickly and you try to throw away what doesn't work. And you're very honest with it. And even if it doesn't work and you go back to something... You'll go out and admit it, and you'll give the players the right advice and the right information all the time. So, I mean, I appreciate the opportunity to be here, but I think everybody learns a lot when, when you do any one of these videos or events. That's what I'm trying to do. One of the biggest things, too, is uh, Foundry. Some people want some more info tips on Foundry. So that's that's maybe for, like, later on. We can maybe even, like, kind of discuss. Maybe I even play over some Foundry stuff, and you can give some of your insights if you ever want to have me back, we have to entitle the Foundry conversation as "Kick Ass Sea Bass." Yeah, I mean, I, maybe we'll, we'll get. We'll, 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 start from there. <laughs> we we can get like a a Foundry committee, and people can kind of just share some things. Because you know what, man, at the end of this, uh, I would I would love to have Foundry be the one thing that we could all do together, any server with maybe a base level set of heroes I, and just do strategy fights with foundry if we're going to make this an international game and you could go play for competition foundry would be really cool to do it in so so i the cool the cool thing about this is i kind of i don't have too much insight but i i do i do bug uh molly and zinman quite a bit especially when i'm trying to put content out i've been working a lot lately but i asked so, hey Hey, what's going on? Because you know that state for state hype video I made. I want to, I want to make stuff and kind of show stuff and you know get people pumped. I don't know if yeah. And and one of these, uh, th there's going to be a new event coming. And I heard it's a lot like Foundry, but it's for individual players. Ah, that'd be fun. So, um, so I mean, it... pound for pound, everybody should try to be the best player they can be. I will tell. Can I can I tell one little quick Foundry tip that I figured out recently? Give her. There's uh, 22 people that will love to probably. Uh, 22 people that want to hear. Yeah. All right. So my little foundry tip that I found so far is when somebody is playing the strategy where they're they're waiting for you to accumulate the points and they're going to come steal, we'll call it the steal strategy. Usually what they're also doing is once the munitions warehouse has come available, they're sneaking in there and doing that. But they can't effectively do the munitions warehouse without having one of them on the map. So make sure that you're always spying if you're one of the attackers in munition warehouses. You're going to find one of their bases nearby, and you can jump them pretty easily, knock them out, knock them out of all the munitions warehouses, and get a lot of kill points doing it. That's my latest tip. I'll teach you, so for the free-to-play players, this is my tip. And this is mentioned, <laughs> and I, I've skipped the last couple foundries. And I woke up, this past foundry was my bad, uh, I was around this past weekend, but I decided to go fishing and I was drinking beer. So I 14 UTC, I, I was up by the campfire till like 2 a.m. guys. 
But DE1 actually put up a good good uh, strategy against evil. And I had mentioned this, and the biggest downfall of evil is that uh, sometimes they think the power is too strong. So when we saw our lineup, we were 12,000 or 13,000 versus 6,000. Really, what, whatever's going on, don't really care. But DE1 came in in spurts, so they are almost like timing. So we'd almost fall asleep at the wheel, and they come. So all of a sudden, you know, like 15 minute mark, they'd all be there and they'd be attacking. But here's one thing many people don't know. So say you come into there and you go hard. So say Binkus, you line up against SGH and you start attacking a bunch of people and you're you're wounded or is over over limited. So all of a sudden you're like, okay, I either have to spend healing speed ups or there's another option. You exit the you exit foundry and you wait the 12 minute cooldown or a 12 minute cooldown and you can enter back in. Well, after 12 minutes, all your all your troops are healed. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. So, so what I had to say for this last one, before our last one, I was kind of doing a little taunting, which I never should do before I play. But I said, whether I put you in the hospital or you put you in the hospital, somebody's going in the timeout box. <laughs> <laughs> we, I, I, I found this out probably the second foundry or th uh, third foundry because I lost connection and then I couldn't reconnect. Oh, that's and, awesome. And then I hopped back in and I was like, wait, I have zero wounded so yeah. then i because i assumed you well know, i guess it gives you credit for hospital time one way or the other whether yeah. you whether they put you in the corner like uh you know penalty box or whether you're offline <laughs> but i guess the 12 minute timer is probably the same but as it said though if all of a sudden a player like you dropped out in gnr they they probably i'm assuming there's some guys in state 70 starting to level up and if if you weren't there hopefully they can win some foundries um depending on the matchup but say you're like hey guys we got to pull out but then you come back with the last 20 minutes and you go hard again you can catch them sleeping and they almost like i i, I woke up at like it would be 14 30 utc and i saw some messages in chat and then i was like and 16 utc i said how did it go guys and then doomsday who always we have this saying, fuck doom. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, it was interesting. Our last foundry, we were fa faced our first steel strategy, and the server was much older than us, like 20 servers, you know, older. And um, we got in there, and they didn't come out of their hole. And we're like, oh, damn it. Now they, they're, they're just going to wait, and they're going to come try to pummel us. And, you know, we, we had to kind of figure it out, but the, you know, being strong where we need to be strong, understanding where we need to be strong, understanding what we could give away, understanding what was valuable, understanding how to pivot and understanding how to just fuck them up when they decided to come on the map was all important. And we killed them. We slaughtered them. And, and all of us were sending doom and gloom messages to each other. Like these guys are going to come out here. They're going to kill us. They're 20 servers older. They know how to do this. We haven't seen this before, and I was just like, guys, do this, you know, let's, let's do this, and Selena was giving some good advice, and, you know, Infinite is just like a friggin' rock, and goes out there and just sits, and it's like, you know, try me, and and we had we had some just really good players playing some, some good ball out there, and when they came on the map, they would they would take our points, and they would take that, that venue, and then we just kind of figured out, okay, you know, guys, let's let's keep 60% and figure out what 40% we're going to give. And when we did that, it just killed them. And that strategy was defeated. And so we learned a lot from that. And I think, you know, there's a lot of good strategies in Foundry. And I think individual strength and team strength plays into it. But, you know, some good good team ball will overcome most, most any strategy in Foundry. I can't... We got, we got another statement here and unfortunately v uh the one who said it you can type your full name there's a glitch in the matrix on discord but what's happening is here the battle mechanisms from sunfire battle for lightly injured gets removed so like she's saying the sunfire battle lightly injured gets removed from building only the survivors say while in the sunfire battle 
so the lightly injured stay in the turret slash castle. So hold on, let's let's go quickly. You're saying the lightly injured gets removed in in foundry, but for Sunfire Battle, you're lightly injured staying in the turrets and castles. I thought I haven't, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen that too because I I've had to send back. I've had to send back my my troops, so to to actually get all my I don't have many troops. So for me, I had to re retreat from the Sunfire Castle when I was fighting DE1, and send more because I I don't have many troops at all. So for me it was opposite. It's Foundry and Sunfire are almost the same, but I'll test it out. Hopefully I I don't know I I don't even think I'm around for this state versus state battle first D uh not D3. State three. Who did you guys line up with, Binkus? We're on 61, 61. Um, and it looks like the leading faction over there is uh, red. Red. Um, I mean, when I'm in, when I'm in the castle, and I mean, obviously being the chunky guy that I am, that's, that's my job is to go sit in the castle and make sure nobody disturbs me from there. But I mean, well, you know, you see the double attack, you see the triple attack, and you know, you see a lot of these different strategies and. I really haven't seen the lightly wounded issue that she's talking about. I mean, you know, you've got to really play timing well, time your reinforcements well, make sure you stand up, and then, you know, retaliation is important. I mean, it's all about time and control, but eventually, you know, this becomes a war of attrition, especially if you have to fight the eight-hour war. And, you know, you're looking for who has enough troops of what kind and how long and how many can we heal them and how long can we heal them and how long can we make them last, right? I mean, that's really the fight. But the the lightly injured issue I haven't seen before. I haven't ran into that yet either. But uh, I I was always running into issues with not enough troops. But I'm still swearing by it. Maybe <laughs> maybe maybe one Trishan, day. Trishan. <laughs> I, I I can't I I I'm probably at the closest. Like I you like, here here's a question I want to know because I was chuckled, and I I've. I have slowed way down in this game, and uh, I'll be honest with everyone. I want to see more from this game before I make my next step. I'm not. Uh, I'm not. I haven't quit by any means. I'm. I'm on. I think I'm 150 days straight. When I go up north, it's really hard. That's what's gonna happen. We're gonna have server migration, and I'm gonna be up north working, and I'll have no service. So for, for, fortunately, server one has been pretty strong. But uh, this is my own personal. What was your highest gem total count? Don't make the free, the free to play players might throw up a little. But what was the well, highest I, gem? You know what? And I got sick when I lost it because I actually lost my highest count with a mistake. Um, but uh, my highest gem total count was about 3.1 million. So it's, it's uh, like I think the highest I at one point was 2 million. And uh, a lot of times when I come on streaming. And I didn't use my gems. I, I, I had I, I, I had an 80 day research that I just loaded, and I fucking misclicked the gem, and it cost me a million gems because I had to do not remind me of this today again thing click, and I like almost fucking spit my coffee out. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck did I just do? Uh, a million gems. I was so pissed off. It took me like two days to get over. <laughs> <laughs> you sending sending messages to Molly saying this isn't right, you know, this like is bullshit. This is bullshit. No. You know what? I just sucked it up, and I'm like, it's my fault. Whatever. Yeah, when I got to my troop training, my highest one there, I was contemplating, and I used to use gems for research too. But uh, once again, you might find this humorous. My research, I'm just kind of. I'm I'm probably the cheapest guy in this game, even though even though I spend money in this game, is I'm waiting for the research hero still, man. I've, I've no, played my, I, I've played. I these... was so pissed. I was so pissed off to be honest with you, and I made this comment to you on our interview session, whatever before, is that you make this major accomplishment in the game, right? Like either you finish all your research, you finish all your buildings. I mean, you spend a lot of money, you spend a lot of time, you spend a lot of energy getting there. There's not even a skin. There's not anything that recognizes it. There's no little buff that you get. There's nothing. It's kind of like, thanks for your however many thousands of bucks to get done with research, a hole. You know, <laughs> move on. Well, you know, we'll figure it out later. And I and I just I found that really empty and lacking in the game. I'm like, 
you know, there are milestones in the game that, that I think that they should reward. And I think that that should be prominent. I, I think it should be decisive, too. I mean, I think if you finished every piece of research in the game, you should get 5 or 10% bonus on some of your stats. You know, maybe I don't care if it's a, you know, a chat box or if it's the, the ring around your picture. I don't care, you know, what it is. You know, but like a skin or a frame or something of recognition is important for that. I and, think... And I, I think they're not doing enough there. I think I think the around your name and it says you know na- neighboring states. You can't just do six players, right? So it's not going to be all states. All states you could have a different skin, but neighboring states, you know, ha- and they need to add a one more leaderboard for research power because research power and chief chief gear power. You know what I mean? So um, that was one I was thinking of, and it wasn't either of those, which is kind of funny. Um, I was thinking of, um, I was, I was thinking of a, uh, a, a, a total battle power, almost like you get when you go to attack somebody, when you're looking at like, um, the beast, when you go out there and, and it tells you what your, your top three, your, your group's battle power is. I thought that would be an interesting one because it takes everything into account. That's it. Uh, we got Invader Zim. He's agreeing with you about this, like you know, end game, some some type of accomplishment. I do, like I I, I don't know. I th- I think it's a lot. Like leaderboards is one thing. I I don't think some people should get too caught up with them. Uh, nah, they don't matter too much. Yeah, because that I'll tell you this: the SGH guy. If you put if you become Binkus, if you became 700 million this this state for state, he's 900 million tomorrow. You know, right, right, right. So there's always that one player, and if you get caught up in that, maybe you're not making your best moves strategically. For you right now, you're just probably troop training. That's all. And and honestly, essence stones. So for actually, actually for us, this was a big one because we challenged a third alliance um, that just that, that paired up to grow. We challenged them because. They had never participated in server growth, right? We felt like they had a lot of selfish players in that group, and we encouraged them to merge because we didn't feel like we had enough strength in our server. And so we encouraged them to merge, and they did. They didn't merge with who we wanted them to, but I guess beggars can't be choosers. So they got big, and they got to be number three. Maybe they'll fluctuate with number two on our server. Who knows? And all of a sudden, they started demanding, well, well, now we're big. Now we merge. Now we want the Sunfire Castle in rotation. I was like, well, you've demanded, but you haven't proven, right? And so well, all of us talked about it, and we said, if we do good in this SVS, and if everybody contributes and cooperates, and if we prove we're peaceful, then sure, you can have a rotation. So they came out, they're number one, they're KMS, they want the rotation. So, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting. And, um, you know, this goes to server dynamics a lot, which is a question that's not been asked yet. But, you know, you can fight everybody, you can kill everybody, you can join everybody. You can try to grow everybody. You can try to manage everybody. I see a lot of people that try to pretend they know a lot about the game to try to manage the whales. Usually it doesn't work. I see whales grouping. Sometimes that doesn't work. I, you know, whatever works. Cultures are important to mix. You know, people are important to mix. Managers are important to mix. But whatever makes your server unify, makes you guys somebody that can be a force to get out there and deal with that. So you have deal with boundary deal with all these other issues i think the gameplay is a lot more fun and i also challenge the developers to do more to make inner server events more fun to encourage this type of game it's uh definitely you know the challenging for the developers thing i that this is why i'm trying to get these interviews i want everyone's kind of voice to be heard a bit differently than the suggestion tab so having you will say the the third highest power for now until maybe there's an update <laughs> it was second power a second highest yesterday but yeah is it is it the is it the strongest player in the game we don't know you know until till there's you know till till we actually see because a lot i would like i would like to say that pound for pound where i am with what heroes i am i'm pretty fucking scrappy yeah so <laughs> i'll i'll say we'll this see. i'll say this uh, there's a reason why I'm saying Gen 3 heroes for now, because I need to know where I'm at from everyone else for Gen 3. So when you guys start rolling out different heroes, I can kind of see myself gauging properly. 
because when the fight happens, I don't want to be too far behind. I get it. I got to know where I got to improve. So you guys yeah. all on the power aspect of things, it's hard for me to gauge because it's like, okay, I know they're max on research, but for me to max research, it's not much. It won't take much. The only thing uh, you'll you'll see. You, uh, you say that until you get to the end and you want to put your toes in the meat grinder. Yeah, just <laughs> just you don't you don't have the the new building yet for research. So this the steel. Uh, the steel needed coming up and I was waiting yeah. for this the steel needed uh, coming up is gonna be kind of um, well thanks for warning me now I know what I gotta buy yeah I've been saving I've been saving up firestones and all this other stuff so steel is it uh, steel is what's gonna hammer me steel is gonna be interesting and then uh, the sto this the stone I gotta buy a couple weeks worth of steel the stones it's a different so uh the fire crystal stones it's shards right but um pound for pound if you want to do it the most cost effective way it's not to you can only convert so many stones to shards yeah. per, per per day but yeah. the, the shards they're only on the uh, the weekly shop right now i haven't seen yeah. a deal i haven't seen a deal pop up and honestly i'm just accruing my steel right now before i fast research a bunch of stuff so maybe don't, don't, turn, don't turn my stomach too quick yeah so now but... i gotta get a bunch of steel and i gotta do daily transitions and i gotta do shards you know there's the, always something right the shards. Why don't the developers why don't the developers get more creative with something cool for us to do for SES? how's that yeah <laughs> uh we got uh someone laughing at us right now we got uh um K, I once again the glitch. Apologize, K. She's saying six million steel. It's more than six million. I believe uh, each each uh, steel for just one research is two million steel for each T11. I believe that's what it was. So it's six million for that, but then you got to spend probably a million to get out of everything. So you're look at least looking at nine million steel. To well, get... now I know what to buy before I get there. I'll be so, forewarned. Key, my new name. Okay, so King B7. There's a bunch of things. Thanks, Bash. But yeah, man, at least come prepared for like, I would say 12 million seal. But once again, another insightful thing, and you joining here. I know they plan on, and I don't know if it was my. I made a little quick YouTube short, and I've kind of been told not to do. A video on the technology tree yet I planned on making one but uh, they've asked me to make well, a, a... I mean that really sucks if you know the and, and this is one of the problems I have with the game if they're not gonna release it equal and they want to try to ban people seeing it like you know level the playing field out release it, it to the whole game I'm, you know uh, or, or don't I mean I, I mean look, look, look at what we're doing at this point bash I mean you're talking about stuff that you've seen and know about. The rest of the players are trying to learn. Oh. I tried to learn. And, I'll, I'll hold you know, up. And, hold up. I'm telling you. I'm telling you what's going on. I, all right. They, I just get. I get yeah. frustrated with this kind <laughs> okay. of stuff. Hey. I mean, I really think that you know, like, especially, especially people that are putting a ton of money in, and there's already previous knowledge out there. I mean, you know, if you're going to invest, or even people that are putting a little bit of money in, and it matters a lot to them, they should know. You know. So. So, uh, well, shock, my, my, my R4. Shock, man, this is a tank. Don't piss him off. He says, got 8 million left, free to play, so see you in a year for T11. But <laughs> but uh, I'll explain, and you'll probably, like, I explained this to a couple of my guys, and I, I told, well, Penny, Penny looks like she finally just got back up, but I think they're going to revamp the technology tree. So to rush it and if they're revamping it like for me i'd be really upset if i spent a bunch of money on steel or a bunch of money on shards and then it changes you know what i mean right all right and i think there was a little bit of negative feedback but i'm used to games like this like ever there, there's a lot of free-to-play players with t10s it well i've yeah, I've, yeah. I've and that's starting to really change the game dynamic right i mean because if you look at the whales, which are, or, or whoever the rally leaders are. I mean, a T10 to a T10-3 
might not matter if the stats of the rally leader are that strong. So, I mean, that's what I'm trying to say is that you're trying to, you see a lot of the middle of the road players now or the free to play or, you know, a little bit to play, you know, are kind of coming in there and becoming, you know, MVPs as far as support and being so, able to make sure that these attacks can go through. Oh, so it's kind of really fun. That That's where is going out here is that uh, I'm used to playing games where it takes over 400 days for a free to play player just to get one troop T10. So 400 days to get to get infantry T10. You know, and to be fair to the developers, you know what I mean? To be fair to the developers, this is one of the things that I think is a major attractive to this game and that brings everybody in is that everything's not so critically expensive. I mean, Yes, it's expensive, but, you know, they've given you a lot for the value for the money that you spend. And I think that there's there's a, a, a pretty quick grow up in, of the um, free to play or partial play players compared to what we've seen in the past. And I've spent a lot of money on a lot of different games, trust me. And, you know, you, you look back at what you invest in and, and where you get to. And I think that, you know, this game is is one of the ones that kind of kind of lets your money go a little farther than some of the others. A hundred percent. We do got one guy here. It's interesting, and people are agreeing with him. He's actually evil, but he's state five evil. Corn on the cob. Uh, he, <laughs> he, he he he's a little bit of power player there, and he says ten point three free to play players are still getting solo attack with ease. So. <laughs> It does matter. Well, like... he, he, but he's not wrong, and that's just what I said too. I, I said that they're 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 not going to be rally leaders, but they're great support, you know. And you know, obviously, if you're a ten point three and you're fifty million, and you're sitting there and somebody's got two hundred or four hundred million, they're going to one tap you. But you know, and here, let me let me say this clearly: there's one part of this game you got to learn. And it's defense, and nobody wants to learn it, right? We have shields. We have free shields in this game. Man, and the other part is, you know, don't piss people off. I mean, you, it, you can live in any kind of environment in this game. You can live in one that you have hunters or resources. You can live in a peaceful state. You can live in a state where people have grudges. You can live in a state where cultures have grudges. You can live in any kind of state and have any kind of reaction that you have to deal with. But I'll, I'll tell you 100% of the time, Nobody can attack you if you're applying a good defense. So if you learn how to play with defense, then maybe you shouldn't be so concerned about getting one tap. That's, you know, I, like when it comes to the free-to-play players, the T10s that get there, that's why I wanted so many to stay in state one because at the end of it, uh, at least if I'm being attacked, I can have more T10s actually backing me up. But the T11s is definitely going to bring a whole new game play to this because I'm not, I'm not sure if you've seen the difference in troops uh, for the power, but it is quite a bit bigger jump. So the T11, the T11 T jump. T T T T11 is a bigger, a huge jump over. T10.5, yes. I'm not even at T10.5 yet. I'm still on T10.3. Me either. I, I, I've... Uh, I'm T10.4, and I, I just stopped. Honestly, I take things slowly lately, and I know Shock, if he's still in here, he's he's getting driven nuts. I think he might have left, but he's my R4, and right. he's like, "When are you? When when are you gonna finally? When are you gonna drop the hammer? When are you gonna drop the hammer?" Honestly, it's been better for us to learn closer fights because we do have battles against you guys, Lord Dynasty against SGH, and. If we can learn the Lord, fight, Lord, Lord Dynasty's the new like kind of Mysterio man. I don't know him, and he's always on the top of everything. I gotta kind of get to know him, but I do. I have always like had some long term respect for uh, for Nas and for Penny and for for you guys. So I mean, it'd be cool if you did the series and you get some different participants. I mean, I'll always come back. And thanks for making me famous, but you know, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know. Well, um, white, white cool oat survival, white oat survival stamp, man. You're the first guy I interviewed, and you're be like, I wanted to, you know, you. I would have loved Nostralian on here, but for some reason, I think Nostralian yeah. was an S9. So you get this, 
I think he was an S9, and I think I actually took down his clan. And there, he, he... there were people, there were people in our server pretending to be an Australian's art just because of how cool he was at the time. Yeah. Right. And everybody's got their moment in the in the in the shade, I guess. So, you know, good for Nas, good for Penny, good for you guys. And I, I mean, there's there's some really good players developing. Guys at SG One are just monsters. You know, we'll we'll see if we have to face them or not. And uh, and uh, I want a I want a cool mustache picture like him when I, when I get there. I'll make yeah. sure I get the same the well, same picture as he well, got. Well, <laughs> well, when the Australian, uh, like I still don't understand it. I don't know. I don't know if someone had pretended pretended to be me, but uh, it sounds like the Australian absolutely just despises me i I don't know what exactly oh, no, i did oh, no. yeah so i was like oh this makes a good play but at least penny me and penny we talk daily and we actually practice the arena against each other and I, that... re I remember i remember when you first fought penny and you were like i don't know if she's a boy or a girl like you know, let me know like, <laughs> yeah. but but yeah she, she did she did chit chat with me unfortunately the way she was going about things and i, I tried to tell her too she kept trying to keep up with Australian's power. I said, you know what? I'm like, just keep doing you. You came out of nowhere. It's like, don't don't switch up your gameplay for troop the power, power. The power wasn't important. What impressed me about Penny was, you know, her understanding of where true power comes from. Yeah. And the players and the import and where Penny always was. And from everything I've seen and been able to see is just, her understanding of true power and strength in the game, which, you know, makes me a follower. You know, she, I'm a fan. She's the, good. I said, uh, I don't care. She, it's like, because she's still stronger than me. I, I, I'll, call, I'll, I'll call it out right now, though. I think, I, and McCody's going to be mad at me, but uh, we got we got McCody. He's second strongest hero right now in Evil. Uh, obviously, he's Gen 4, so is it second strongest? Not really, but um, <laughs> he's He's currently he's just behind Penny in the strongest hero right now. I would say that he's stronger than her. Uh, we we yeah. got we got Gen three uh, we we got Gen fours fighting each other. I asked State one, do I you, you guys want me to use my Gen fours? And State one has voted for me not to use my my Gen fours for this state for state. So. I gotta keep uh, I gotta keep relaxing and it's gonna be fun because state one is gonna go battle and honestly this weekend is well, my we, my anniversary we'll weekend so I can't I can't even do the state for state because um, <laughs> you know what? happy wife happy life I'm not exactly. I'm not gonna be on a phone and let's talk about the state for state once again I can't spend eight hours on a Saturday oh, doing a state for state yeah I want to pull my eyeballs out and kick them across the floor. It's just ridiculous. And well, it's like, oh, I triple battled you at hour 336, <laughs> and now you have to fight me for eight hours. I'm gonna, please, just kill me. Just shoot me right in the fucking forehead <laughs> right now. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, it was a mobile game. Who plays like that? Like, where did the idea come up with that we could have a four-hour fight that extends to an eight-hour fight? I don't give a fat baby fuck how many points people want. <laughs> Like, this is ridiculous, and it's stupid, and people hate it, and nobody's going to watch it. And if it keeps going on, we're just going to start shedding people like the fucking Titanic was sinking. It's... So we got to figure out how to figure this out, because if we don't, then this is going to be a game that's just going to tweak my nipples to the point that I don't know if I'm going to reach for my wall anymore. Honestly, the way it should be done is it should be a, a, build, to, a build to a common facility. So we all start yeah, off, and that facility is up for grabs for At the end of the fight. Yeah, so we could have a month where we're all fighting on a common f a map, and we're building to it. Oh, yeah. I don't like, I don't, however, like the change of you can move your HQ, and this will be a big complaint here. What's going to happen is people are going to complain about jumping around your HQ wherever you want. I think. That should have a cooldown time. You can't just, you know, move your HQ next to your enemy when you know you're way stronger than them. And at the start, why not, right? But there should be a cooldown time. If you place your HQ, you build it. If it's made, 
and you tear it down, there should be a cooldown time. I don't think you should just be able to hop around like Frogger. So, so, so that argument means that distance is a defense. Not strength, distance. Yeah. yeah. And I don't know if I agree with that. Distance is not a defense. If you can talk shit from across the map, you can get slapped from across the map. I think, so, but 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 the way it would work is it leads up to a larger battle, and this is just going off a of past game well, I played. I think, I think that's why you. I think that's why you territory control. You control by gates yeah. and openings and times and things like that, right? I mean, I don't think you should be able to hop all the way across the map. I think you've got to be constrained. I think your position starting on the map matters. I think your building matters. I think all of it matters, right? Yeah. So, so but. I don't know. Everybody's got some ideas for it. But uh, at least tell me. It's like, so I did find out the first state for state day when they kind of released stuff. I was like, okay, sweet. It's going to be June 6th. That's my daughter's birthday. Whatever. I'll make some time. And then I found out it was a, like a seven day event and the battle phase was like on a weekend. I can't remember. I'm So oh. after, after your hype video, what do you found that out? Smile or frown? Oh, I wanted to, I wanted to throw up, man. It was like, you know, I put I I put a little like I I poured a coffee with some Baileys. I'm like, I, I'm stoked. They got this news. I make this hype video. So I make this hype video, and then I find out what it is. I'm like, okay, it's Sunfire 2.0. It is what it is. Yeah. But I would like a little bit notice because, like, honestly, I'm I'm the type of guy that I got time. I could tell my work if it's Saturday, or I, I, I my wife is cool. If I told her. Hey, Saturday, I got to be in the garage for like four hours. I'm playing this game. And she, she gets it. She does get it. She knows enough that I'm like playing this game. I've got my Discord community. She she would let me. But you know what the issue is? Like all of a sudden it drops. I kind of got a schedule now. So I'm like, okay, next, a month from now, that Saturday. But you know what? I'm probably a month from now, next Saturday, I'll probably be up north working. So it the one battle time that I can have any implications, I can't be there, which sucks when it's only eight hours. It's not a true state for state because I don't have 30 days to put my lasting effect on it. Because most of the state for states and games I played, it's been decided like day 20 or day 22, who's getting the last community. And then the, right. the smaller clans, yeah. so the smaller clans, actually get a fight for something too you know what i mean so like right now it seems like right now it's gonna be evil versus hoc so s1 uh versus s3 but evil's going for their their sunfire castle and hoc is gonna defend but there's been a rumor that state three isn't even gonna defend they're just gonna shield and if that happens if that's what's happening and there is no uh, occurrence um I, I i don't like like I'm not all about, like, I don't push just positive videos and say, hey, man, look at how sweet Whiteout is. And I don't push negative videos because I won't hammer stuff. But I will do a video of just these guys. If they're all shielded and it's just evil sitting in a Sunfire Castle for four hours. Like, you guys see this hype? It just right. didn't didn't work out. And as much oh. as it's, like, it could hurt, it could hurt how many people download the game or it could hurt, like, the effect... Maybe it sends a message to developers, and I'm not saying that I'm going to make something like that, but I might share it to developers. But at least I can tell people a bit more, too. Like, this is what to expect. If, like, we're, we're the strong, according to power, we're the strongest clan in the game. So when people line up against us, they're like, eh, you know what? Like, we're not even going to fight them. Who cares? <coughs> Well, it makes sense, and I think, you know, the listeners of this thing are people from all different states that have either experienced or not experienced SVS, and we're trying to figure it out, and I think a lot of the stuff we've said has been helpful, and a lot of the stuff we've critiqued has been helpful, but at the end, I think it's important that if somebody from the development team listens to the video and listens to what we had to say, it was coming from a place of players that love the game and want to see it better. Right, and 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 not the converse. Yeah, it's. I that's that's all I'm trying to do. That's what I said. So I, I'm gonna get your voice out there, and then uh, as long as you're cool, like I said, I'll edit. It's going on YouTube. Get your voice out there. I'm gonna get some guys from S19, S20, 
S1, we might do a round table. There's so many people from state one that want to just ha kind of have their say. And I'll probably line it up uh, on a Sunday or a Saturday, UK at night, and everyone's just drinking, and we're going to have our say, and we're just going to say things out loud. Maybe people get a little bit mad about it, but you know what? Uh, no. We're, we're the be fun. Yeah, well, it would we're... be fun. You know, I mean, I was at my favorite sushi bar having sushi, and she's like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "I want to interview." And she goes, "For what?" I said, "For a for a video game." <laughs> she goes, "I said famous." I said, "I don't know." And she goes, "What do you mean?" I said, "Just pour me another martini until I get done with this thing." <laughs> yeah, it's funny, man. No, it says, you know, like, who knows? Like, I'm. I started just doing this YouTube stuff for fun. Uh, it was kind of, I tried doing it during the Walking Dead game. Uh, that game is addictive, highly addictive. They have $30,000 US heroes. They got $50,000 US um, like um, wagons or like vehicles. I, it's that game. So when people say this game is pay to win, uh, you want know man it is but it is but it's not comparison right exactly so, so uh so bash i'll end this and i'll offer you this i own a charter fishing boat and we fish for marlin on the east coast of the u.s in the months of july and august and early september so if you ever want to come down and go marlin fishing i'll i'll take you at my cost and we'll do a, a little thing for the internet and have fun with it yeah, man, why not? And they said, if you come, uh, we got lots of good fishing up north. Uh, so if you come up to, uh, you fly down into Edmonton, I'll pick you up at the airport and we can go uh, hit hit some fishing up north too. I uh, never caught a marlin before, so we might have to just continue talking. And this is, this is what, what this game's about. As much as people, they want to invest uh, making clans, it's about making friends and just, that, I still talk to many people, right? So... And I've, met a, I've met a lot of friends. I mean, I got a guy from Australia that's going to come fish on my boat. I've got our leader, Selena, going to visit her in Germany. I mean, just because of business and whatever else. So, I mean, it's a game. It's a long time thing. It's something fun to play. There's different layers. There's different levels to play the game at, which is why I felt like free to play is okay. Pay, pay to play is okay. And, and we can all get along in the game. We all have our place. We all have our ability <laughs> to contribute and our ability to. Sorry, I'm choking. Our ability to contribute, our ability to 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 help the team. But we also have the ability to meet each other and enjoy our friendships and you know do do what's fun on the internet games. 100%, man. It's funny because we got Invader Zim saying, "Did we just become best friends?" Yep. But uh, it's it's funny because my best friend's actually in the chat list in Bash Brother 2. So he's like, hey, hold up a minute, man. <laughs> but no, dude, this is uh, like the first time interviewing. Won't be the last time. Uh, it would be sweet. I'm still like, if I can get an Australian on, that would be sweet. Uh, I yeah, do... I'd love to talk to Nas. I'd love to talk to Penny, yeah. honestly. I mean, they're kind of my uh, initial idols in the game. And uh I'd like to I'd like to hear their perspectives for sure. Yeah, and yeah, just just uh, any time like uh, state seventy, any connections you got for people that are free to play, or even you're talking your 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 uh, your R five, if they want to have their time to speak, most people are kind of like nervous to speak. I appreciate you coming on, but uh, I do need free to play players or minimal play players to come on and say their thoughts because. We all have our thoughts. The people have spent quite a bit of money on this game. We have our thoughts, and we're like, it should go this way. But these other people, uh, you know, I, there could be a thousand players. And uh, I'm not saying this any mean way for people. Uh, these thousand players have spent thousands of dollars. That's what's creating and more developing more features for everyone. But if all the free to play players went away, we. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we wouldn't we, have a, we wouldn't have a team. We wouldn't have a team, so we we need as many free to play players. So I want to interview some of them, get their thoughts, and you know, I, like it's it can't. It, the only thing I tell a free to play player, and I seem like an asshole about it, is 
they say, hey, uh, I like an event where I can get far more essence stones. Well, it's there, but it, that's part of being a whale is getting these items. So if they make essence stones more available, then what's going to happen is there'll be. A... Tell, 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 tell everybody the trick real quick. All right. So if you invest in 100, at least, I don't know how many it is, but if I upgrade one of my players, and I spend 100 or 110 essence stones. Stop right then and there. Back out of everything. You will get a free package every day for 240 essence stones for 100 bucks. And so you never have to buy the whole package. You always have to just go day by day and do your essence stones. Do one upgrade, back off, buy the free pack, and you have double the amount that you just spent for $100. You keep saying free, but these free-to-play payers are here in a hundred dollars. <laughs> but well, but when I say free, I I I I'm I'm basing that relative on the cost of buying a pack of stones. We Not got free, but a oh, lot cheaper. It, <laughs> cheaper it, a two for one. We got oh yikes, man! You know what? The the chat is blowing up there. <laughs> it's free to play if you buy in. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, corn on the cob. What he just said is kind of a little trick. Is if you spend so many essence stones, then that 240 pack shows up, and it's like, uh, is it 3,000 percent? I can't. So that that's how Lord Dynasty, like this guy, he came out of nowhere. He, he's like, he's probably past. He's probably 60 million power for total heroes. He probably actually has. Um, you Lord know what? Dynasty though? is the man. Yeah. Yeah, so he he's he's scary. Okay, so the 240 pack is only 1400%. Not that really good. You know what? It depends on what you're considering 1400% because that essence stones I don't believe has uh, resources. Is that correct? I mean, I, no, it does. It does. Okay, so but, I love but, packs. But I love packs without resources. Same, we get this argument about where, where the most value is and. I call the mystery zones well food, right? Because it costs you a lot of gems to do it. But the level of speed up, it's like if you spend 1100 bucks in a week, you'll wind up with 220 days worth of speed ups. It'll cost you also four to $600,000 worth of gems. You know, so yeah, you, you, you got to pick where your value is, I guess. Uh, see, I'm, on the I, I'm so cheap. What you told me about the mystery badges... I did pick some of those guys up, but I keep my gems. I'm just refreshing daily. <laughs> so yeah. it might it might take me a while, but uh, it's a, if if, like if you want to do it overnight, yeah. There's different levels of playing the game. I mean, and you know, I hope everybody enjoys all the levels there are to play. Uh, Mateo, the highest level for forgery that I know of is level 20. I pushed it to level 16. I stopped. Um, <laughs> mythic hero gear is the hardest point. So actually, my little thing that I was investing in was uh, the uh, and maybe Binkus, you've done this is I've been getting I, I don't get the uh, the gear XP. I just get the I get the the uh, actual uh, the bags or what do, what do you call it for the random gear. That's what I I I grab those. And hopefully I get a couple of mythic heroes. I mean mythic gear, because that's the only way. Because at one point I got to save these things up, and if so, I if I, I mean, need I'm, to, I'm I'm a big investor. I buy all 600 bucks or every week, and I get on average seven to eight pieces of gold. I get one from the arena, so I have between eight and nine pieces of gold per week, yeah. and then occasionally. You'll get the uh, the pack that comes with selection for the uh, for the chest. Out of the chest, you get six to seven pieces of gold. Yeah. So those are those are all your sources, really. So that's the only like for my know from these games, that's the only way you're gonna be able to like level up hardcore is is uh, you need that gold gear, and if you don't get it, eventually season we're, we're still season one most people have to understand this game this is season one they still haven't figured out season two uh that's what i'd be terrified you know 
state, I, I, I swear, like state, sorry, corn on the cob, you're there, but state five to state like, like 50, I, I don't know, man. Like, uh, if you don't figure out server piece, it could be a long time. Like server one is, is dropped off for players too, but at least a lot of our players that are still free to play, they don't have to wake up about worry about being zeroed, but it's, it doesn't, at this point, it doesn't even look like there's a season two prepared for this game. So it makes me a bit cautious, not not saying anything <coughs> Binkus about spending a bunch of money, but it's just kind of like, okay, well, what's the next goal for this game? Hopefully it's, uh, hopefully it's a season two and uh, I don't care. I, I would actually, I, I would love it if I got zeroed. People don't understand, like, when, when I did my biggest power jump is actually when I lost and Penny... Penny literally, she was kind of, she she was she was good, fun spirits, but she said that she was gonna beat me, and they like said I just laughed when Zimmin won. I just, but that was just poor, yeah. that was just poor. Like as much as I said as Zimmin, it was infantry. Someone had to top up their infantry. It never happened. They got more marksmen and lancers in there, and they lost because of that. So. <sighs> so nobody, yeah. Nobody. Nobody ever. Nobody ever remembers when they win yeah everybody, everybody always remembers when they lose right so yeah. if yeah. you beat somebody once they'll remember it forever if well, you if you yeah. lose you should move on and it's it's an interesting dynamic because the people you choose to zero the ones that are there for you tomorrow trust me yeah a lot of the people that uh the the guy that beat me he uh, he joined me and now he's AFK and basically quit the game. So it's kind of interesting that way. Like I said, if there's no competition, then what are you kind of really fighting for at that point? And uh, you're you're fighting to be one of the biggest whales in this game. For me, um, honestly, eventually I'd be fighting to be the strongest in my server again. So I'll I'll get to I'll get a fire underneath me again to be the strongest in state one, but. Uh, we will have many battles. I expect, I think by a month's time, Evil will only be ranked number two. That SGH, they'll probably be, like, that guy's going to be worth, he'll be probably 800 million power <laughs> at that point. So, it'll be interesting. It depends who they line up against, but, like, I do, I'm not, Evil's demise won't happen underneath our control. We're still, uh, we're 95 active daily, uh, but unfortunately, yeah, we saw we saw five people drop off here, which I focus on, and we don't steal from other play, other teams. But uh, uh, we got Invader Zim saying, "I try to warn people in our state about being too strong and not having competition." Yeah, I, I saw I saw like people much more invested than SGH. Um, uh, whatever that guy, I can't say his name. The strongest player I've seen some big, big whales in other games just drop off the face of the earth. I'm not saying Binkus will drop off the face of the earth, but sometimes people just have more money than the rest of us, and they just say, you know what, this game sucks. I'm moving on to the next game, and they're okay with it. So that's us. If you keep grinding, uh, eventually it all. It, I'm not saying evens out, but evil maybe will get their ass kicked a couple times merges happen maybe we get new players or maybe we fall off but we'll end up in a different server one day where we start winning again it's kind of like Binka said they lost their first couple foundries now they're winning it's about a ranking system so you ever play call of duty and you hop in a game you win a couple of rounds and then you go up and you're against the best players in the world then you drop back down it just happens you're not going to win all the time in video games you don't win all the time in life that's the way it is so if people play this game and want to win 24 7 it's uh, not going to happen uh, what i'm hearing from what i'm hearing from you bash is a little bit of bitch you better strengthen up and get it right let's go <laughs> i want to play with you someday oh, it, oh it, it'll happen it'll happen and uh i've i've been telling I, man i love pvp and i i've all i've done like, I haven't said too many people, hey, but it, my, this is this isn't live my, on YouTube. I I sold I sold my company I sold my company last year, so I had my own company, and I put all my money into investments, and I don't I, I don't even have this cash, but I, I have a decent job, where I, I'm 32 years old and I don't have many uh, worries in life. My wife does really well. 
Uh, I'm not behind. Like my, I just have a mortgage payment, and really the mortgage payment doesn't even bug me. So I could go full ham on this game, and I don't care. I love, but I've been fighting for the past. Like me and Bash Brother Two, we we were fighting whales for like two years in The Walking Dead, and I've made whales quit this game on me being medium powered. You just gotta be, you you gotta be smart. You just gotta you gotta play smart. And it's it's amazing. I'm not saying that that SGH guy will lose all his troops, but when he starts playing no, silly, but he's a tar- he's a tar- he's a target though. Yeah, I mean, he really is. Like whatever you're number one, you're the target. Like I can be number two or three all day and be fine. You know, it doesn't bother me at all. But yeah. I I enjoy the challenge and and um, I hope you're well off and and I hope you do well. But at the end of the day, you know, it's it's enjoyment to talk to you, enjoyment to talk to the people that are that are good in the game, that, that really <laughs> like to develop it and and, and make it better. And yeah. I hope, you know, this edited video or audio or whatever it is makes uh makes some changes that are positive to the game. Hopefully, like I said it's the first of many, but uh, we do got to end it here shortly, like well, actually right away, because I do have to edit this video. Um, I'll probably actually put the interview on before Gen 4 Heroes happens, but uh, I do appreciate you coming on. And they said we should do uh, we should do like a round table of like, man, if if it'd be sweet if I could get, if Nostralian likes chit chatting, and I don't I don't even know where he's from. If he's from North America, Europe, where he's who knows? I, I think he's French. To tell you the truth, so um, I'll pull him I'll pour him a martini and we can have whiskeys one day. You know. <laughs> well then, sucker, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Let's uh, have him on. It'll be yeah. fun. All yeah. Right. All right, man. Bye. Cheers. Thanks a lot for coming on, man. All right. All right. Bye. Bye. Yo, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, once again, thank you to GNR and letting me talk to their whale, Binkus. Binkus, thank you for taking your time yesterday. I will be dropping Gen 4 later on. I got Monster Jam to attend to with my son, so please be patient. Hopefully you guys enjoy this. I do recommend if you tell people to share it, play it sped up, or break it up during the days. Cheers, guys.